morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, yeah, good morning. I'd like to call this meeting of the Tourist Development Council to order October 12th, 2022. Um, wow. And I believe you were absent last time, as yeah. I were. So well, I'm alive. That's always good. Would you like to leave the invocation as Absolutely. is? Absolutely. Thank you. The normal. Yes, ma'am. If y'all join me, please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to meet. We thank you for the chances we have in a great country where we're still free and we can meet openly like this and discuss things and come to conclusions that benefit everyone. We thank you again for blessing this meeting. We pray that you continually bless our first responders, whether it's our local or military serving here and overseas. We continue to pray for the people below us that got hit by the storm and praise you for making it miss us. We just ask all these things, Father, and praise you for them, and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right, roll call, please. Okay, so present we have Chair Holly Davis. Vice Chair via TV, Mike Ingalls, Cindy Guy, Jackie Hepfer, Michael Mankey, Mike Shoemaker, Jean McGee, absent is Dr. Desai and Ashton Strock, so we have a quorum. Outstanding. All right, uh, approval of agenda. Looking for a motion, please. So moved. Second. Team's back. <laughs> which was which? I love it. We, we Cindy motion. motion. Okay. <laughs> First by Cindy Guy, second by Jackie Hefner. Any public comment? Any board discussion? Okay. Seeing yeah. none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Um, why is there a A4 and A4A? I don't know. I'm. Uh, I'm easily confused this early in the morning, but I'm thinking it's I'm thinking it's the agenda system. Oh, yeah, it's the attachment. Ask me how much I like the agenda system on anything to do with <laughs> the county. But anyway, all right, moving on to B one. Looking for an approval on the September fourteenth meeting minutes. So moved. Second. All right, first by Jackie Hepner, second by Cindy Guy. Any public comment? Any board discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, moving on to C, open to the public. Anybody want to come up and chat with us? Anyone? Anyone? All right. <laughs> Did you really just say Bueller? Who? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on. Y'all have a, another opportunity. So moving on to D1. So, uh, D1 is a, is an opportunity. Uh, we have Captain Rick Murphy and his team will be uh, walking you through the proposal. Uh, you can do a far better job than I. So uh, they're on the on the TV screen though. So can you all hear me over there in Miami? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I wasn't sure. I'm always tentative of our technology. So uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to Rick and you can uh, walk the group through. They have the proposal that you sent us uh, in their packet. Um, if you want to share your Good screen, morning. I think you can do that if maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the technology thing I always get. So uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to you, Rick. Uh, thank you, and uh, we'll see. Okay. <clears throat> so good morning, everybody. My name's Captain Rick Murphy. I'm the CEO of RM Media, which consists of four different brands you'll see here in a second. And uh, my wife, Kathy Murphy, is here. She's the CFO. And then we have Colin Bukowski, who's in charge of all of our uh, social media. So if you guys have any questions during this presentation, don't wait till the end. Um, it'd do better if we can talk about it while it's happening at the time so it's fresh in everybody's mind. All right? Can you guys see the screen and everything? Yes. Okay, so we'll get rolling. So RM Media consists of four brands. We have Captain Rick Murphy, the fishing guide. We have guides that work with us, for us. Uh, then we have Sportsman's Adventures, our national brand, which is what we're primarily proposing to you. 
We also have the Florida Insider Fishing Report, which is something that you currently sponsor uh, on a regional basis, and then the Texas Insider Fishing Report, which is not part of this presentation. <clears throat> we want to talk to you guys this morning about some national uh, opportunity with Discover Crystal River. Um, we've shot some shows there. This is one with Mario Castello out of the plantation and a redfish show that we did last year, and you'll see some uh, video and some content that was created throughout that show. Go ahead. So starting off, we want to give you a little bit of a recap of what you've received so far um, with you guys. So the Florida Insider Fishing Report it airs on Valley Sports Sun. Valley Sports used to be the Fox Sports uh, Sun. Uh, they were bought by uh, Sinclair, and now they title sponsor for uh, all of those regional sports network is Valley's uh, because of their online gambling capabilities. And these networks all carry uh, those professional teams like the Tampa Bay Rays, the Miami Heat, the Orlando Magic, uh, the Marlins, and so on and so on. Go ahead, Colin. So what you guys uh, receive each week is a potential 4 million potential households. We air April through September, 26 weeks, four times a week for 104 shows, which is what the contract reads. We air Thursday night prime time, usually a repeat after the professional game. So we have a good audience built in because of the people that tune in for all those sports games. Then we have a Friday afternoon before the weekend and then Saturday at 930. And the model of this show, ladies and gentlemen, is primarily we have nine captains. We've broken the state down into nine regions. And each one of those captains each week gives us a four and a half minute report about what's going on in their perspective region. So that if you live in Gainesville, you might decide you want to go to <clears throat> Crystal River one week, and then the next week maybe you travel uh, up the coast a little to Stein Hatchie, or maybe you decide to go over on the East Coast. But it gives everybody a pregame to what's happening from local guides, from tackle store owners, from their own personal guide trips. Most of them are all captains and they have a, a, a guide business, which allows them to have an, a real good pulse of what's happening within their perspective region. <laughs> this past season, uh, I'm sorry, in 2021, our viewership was 6.7 million in those 26 weeks. Uh, now remember this about Valley Sports, when they measure their Nielsen rating system, they're only buying Orlando, Daytona, Tampa, and Sarasota, and then Miami, Fort Lauderdale. So they're only measuring where they sell pro team uh, packages because they obviously are selling advertising, but it costs them millions of dollars to get these numbers through Nielsen. Uh, so realistically, what we're posting here is only what we have numbers for, but we don't really have a number that goes from, let's say, Orlando North to the Georgia line, all the way over to Alabama and all the way back down to Tampa. So my point being is that some of the other uh, customers that we have like Yamaha and some of our uh, big uh, rod and reel manufacturers, they sponsor three or four different categories. My point being is that those agencies are very comfortable at least doubling this number because we're not measuring from those areas including South Sarasota to all the way to Miami on the West Coast. So keep that in mind as we go through this presentation that we probably got over 13 million uh, views that year. Uh, each week, <clears throat> we create an overlay. And what that overlay does is it goes out to all of our constant contact. It goes out to all of our sponsors, goes out on Wednesday reminding them that this is the show we're going to be talking about redfish this particular week and this is the times of when it's going to be on so that they can repost it as you can see there's no sponsor logos here because we do it that way so that we don't have conflicting customers that maybe wouldn't repost it uh and then that way it doesn't get as much traffic so 
Any questions about that? All right, we'll keep moving on. This is what the show looks like at the beginning. Go ahead. The night species is found inshore around the mangrove shorelines and in the passes. What I love about this fish is that they jump and they shake their head like a bass. What we're talking about is the line cider, or more commonly known as the snook, here on the Florida Insider Fisher Report, and it starts now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. This is the Florida Insider Fishing Report, and we are glad to have you back with us for another week of catching. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Rick Murphy, ready for a jam-packed show full of special guests, a powerhouse live audience, and we're talking about my favorite interest being to catch snook. It's really a dream show right now. I know, and the view. Look at this great live audience, Bree. It's so awesome. We will finally return. I feel yeah. whole again. I do too, really. I'm super energized, excited. And one of our special guests tonight, he's one of our very own captains. He's over at the CCA where Francis Dave Farrell. Dave, do you care to share who it is? Uh, what's your name? <laughs> My colleague. Captain. <laughs> captain's his name. You just call me Captain. Hollywood. That's what I call him. So, Hollywood's in the house. Pete shot to catch a snook. One of these, because I can. Uh, so you know, my colleague, my holiday has caught more big snook than just about anybody I know, day in and day out. Yep. I'm so excited to hear what rigs and techniques he got for everybody at home. Me too. All right. Well, let's not keep these fine folks waiting any longer and go catch some snook in the Casa de Hot Southwest. So the other thing that you guys are sponsoring uh, <laughs> through John is the Discover Crystal River region. Um, what you get is you get your logo in the left-hand corner during the four and a half minutes of our captain, Jeff Hageman's report, you're going to have this logo, your tagline, as well as your website. And no matter what the species is in the box, whether it's grouper, redfish, trout, or he's talking about kingfish offshore or whatever it may be, that logo is up there this four and a half minutes. And this is what it looks like, including how the region is highlighted. All right, Rick, we're checking in with our next captain, Jeff Hageman, where you'll discover all kinds of grouper in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. Jeff, give us our options, please. <laughs> grouper can be found throughout my rig, uh, region. We have relatively shallow coves and lots of rock lines come by. <clears throat> grouper fishing is probably one of the best in the state, from inshore, near shore to offshore. You know, fish around flat limestone bottom with, with holes in it. Uh, rock piles, ledges, iron leaf structures, and wrecks. So that gives you a sample of what it looks like. You get the audio mentioned before he actually comes on camera, before your logos go up there. So if you're into buying content, uh, certainly you're getting about five minutes of total presence with inside of that show, not including your billboards and your commercials. Also, from your region at a lesser budget, which is uh, the hotspot. So at the end of his uh, region, at the end of his report, then I actually read uh, the hotspots that's recommended by him for you to go do, and this is what they look like. If, <laughs> you're correct. All right, thank you so much. Good report. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Ozella Key Marina hotspots from the Northwest region. He says, in short. Snook on the outgoing and incoming tides on the beaches and passes, and then offshore mangrove snapper bite 20 to 120 feet of water over any high relief structure. Use shrimp or small sardines from bait free line with lots of chunk. So, because of the popularity and the reach, um, Ozella, you know, they actually pay for this spot. So, the cool part is that with inside of your region, you have smaller partners that are doing uh, advertising as well during the time that that region is on. Now, each week, these regions rotate, which is really a cool concept because it doesn't allow a guy to tune in, you know, 20 minutes into the show or an hour into the show each week. We scramble that deck. We shuffle the deck each week. So one week, the Discover Crystal River region could be first. Then the next week, it could be fourth. And then the next week, it could be eighth. So that's the cool part about this is it keeps people tuning in throughout the whole 90 minutes. 
Uh, Discover Crystal River Sweepstakes was a uh, contest that John and I created along with his team and uh, Florida Insider Fisher Report and the sweepstakes. It ran uh, from week three through week seven in 2021, and the winner was announced on week nine. The number of entries was 909 over the five-week period. And, Colin, you got something you want to add to this? Uh, yeah, so that uh, that 909 number is uh, part of the requirement that we made for this sweepstakes was that people had to actually opt in to receive emails um, as part of the contest. And we only were accepting people that did that as winners. So we, we really had around, I think, the number was closer to 1,600 people that signed up, but of that number, 909 actually opted in. So those were the list of people that we considered uh, to win that contest. Go ahead. All right, it's time to reel in awesome and discover Crystal River. Enter to win a deluxe CCA Florida Star getaway with accommodations provided by Plantation on Crystal River and guided fishing by River Adventure Tours. Included in your package is a two-night deluxe stay at Plantation Crystal River, breakfast for two, chef-prepared lunch or dinner for two at West 82 Bar and Grill, CCA membership and tournament fees for one, and invitation to the CCA host banquet for two on October 9th. So head over to FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com to enter. There's a lot to win there. Yeah, it is. All right. So as you can see, what we try to do in any of these contests and sweepstakes is we involve your local uh, retailers, whether it's a hotel or whether it's a, a, a food destination. And the whole concept is that the people come there, they play there, and they stay there. Go ahead, Colin. So as you can tell, I have a full house, and we have John from Discover Crystal River. And John, let's talk a little bit about this great contest that we created. Yeah, we're happy to partner with CCA. It's a, it fits right in our wheelhouse of our events and everything. So uh, our contest, we're giving away an annual membership into CCA plus the entry fee to the CCA Star Tournament. We're also providing two days of fishing with Captain, Captain Gary Bartell Jr. from Mozello Keys Marina. Tell us why it's so important for you guys to be a, a destination sponsor. Well, as a destination sponsor, we are able to have eight redfish instead of the normal four, which uh, definitely increases our chances of our anglers winning a big prize. Now, Rosemary, you're certainly a partner in this from Plantation and Crystal River. How are you guys involved? So we're actually involved twofold. Uh, we are a destination resort, and we obviously sit in a destination county, Citrus County. We also sit on the STAR Committee. We are also an official pickup for the official measuring device, the CCA STAR measuring device, and we are giving away a two-night stay, dinner, and breakfast for the winner. I love it. Oh, Lisa, this is a big deal for CCA Star. So. It is. It really is, Rick. And they are such great partners. And, you know, the Star competition begins this Saturday, May the 29th. And we're very excited because we have some really cool news. What is it? Um, Citrus County had one of our West Marine Star Tag Redfish caught by one of the plantation uh, resorts captains, Captain Zach Zachary. And that fish was actually caught by his client and released which means they still have eight total tag redfish in their county, gives them an opportunity to win a contender, a pathfinder, or a spider vapor. And, you know, Citrus County also has all of the other species, so 17 divisions, half a million dollars in prizes, all. You can go to Citrus County and catch everything. So which one of you three knows who the winner is? Uh, that would be me. And <laughs> our winner is uh, Don Kay from Dade City. So we're happy to... Uh, announce that, and we'll be in touch shortly on how to claim your prizes. Well, congratulations. 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 Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. You know, Lisa, I do have a couple questions for you. You know, one thing that has been not a good thing when it comes to the star is that people are catching these redfish throughout the whole state. That's right. But where's their downfall? The downfall is 
and I, I hate to do this, but if you got this on the forehead, <laughs> you uh, don't accomplish stardom. Right. Um, don't don't go out on the water without being registered. You have to be a CCA member. You have to be registered in STAR. It's only a total of $75. And but how do you do it? You go to our website, ccaflstar.com. Get yourself registered, and you have a shot at a half a million dollars in prizes over 101 days of fishing. And you can go to Citrus County, visit the plantation, and you have better odds at catching one of those West Marine tag redfish. Well, we're grateful for all the partnerships and this great contest that you guys did. We're going to have a whole lot more from Discover Crystal River in the future. Some really cool tidbits about their county. So uh, in the meantime, though, Bree, where are we going next? So one of the things that we really appreciate is that we're, your sponsors, your partners, people that you do other things with, through the voice of the Florida Insider Fisher Report, they're our sponsors as well. So now we have the synergy of the three brands uh, working together with hotels, with star contests. If you don't know what coastal conservation is, which is CCA, they're essentially like the NRA. They protect our fishing rights here in the state of Florida. They have lobbyists that live in Tallahassee. So every time there's a meeting in regards to uh, rules and regulations that uh, the state is going to be making in regards to fisheries or even in hunting situations, <laughs> They're there fighting for us. They're there also fighting in Washington for us, for all our rules and our rights to be able to continue to fish in destinations like Discover Crystal River. So if you don't know what it is, hopefully that gives you a better explanation as to what Co Coastal Conservation Association is. Go ahead. Join in the fun and the reeling awesome in Crystal River and Comasata during the family-friendly CCA Star Fishing Tournament. It's great for all ages and experience levels. Let our professional captains take you on fishing and scalloping adventures. Plus, make sure to stay longer to discover the soul of Florida here in Crystal River in Homosassa. Book your fishing and scalloping vacation now and save with midweek rates at hotels and resorts. Plan your getaway at discovercrystalriverfl.com. The beautiful thing about partnering with RM Media or Sportsman's Adventures in this case, which we're proposing, you've already got the partnership through the Florida Insider Fisher Report, is that we're a full production facility. We have the ability to create packages like that, promotions like that, and we're able to take those things that we create here through editing and through shooting and whatnot it's don't have to go outside and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to create packages we have the ability to do that for you now we create content and then you can turn around and repurpose it through your website through john's agency and have the ability to have that live on long after it's aired on the different venues that we offer so crystal river received a billboard in each and every episode of the florida insider fisher report even though the contract read 104 airings, we had some additional repeats that we were given by the network because we're their biggest outdoor provider. So you received actually 135 billboards last season. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Discover Crystal River, Florida. <laughs> That's an example of what the billboard looked like. It's a standalone billboard that... Uh, is a full screen so it's not shared by other you know like brought to you by these fine sponsors and it's a little one inch by one inch and there's six other sponsors up there but here's your commercial your commercial aired 135 times as well uh this is what your commercial looked like come explore untouched florida where you'll step into holy sea cow and fish pristine waters where you'll reel in Whoa, come discover Crystal River with exciting adventures and incredible surprises everywhere. From exhilarating river adventures to scalloping in the Gulf to delicious fish to fork cuisine, this is the place where you can relax into, ah, just a short drive from Tampa and Orlando is the amazing Discover Crystal River, Florida. Learn more at discovercrystalriverfl.com. So let's touch on something before we leave the Florida Insider Fisher Report. The reason we're giving you 2021 numbers is this presentation we did for John in midstream 
uh, back in June. Um, so we don't have the final Nielsen numbers for 2022. Uh, so we just kept it simple. You guys did sponsor the Florida Insider Fisher Report in 2022. So there'll be some recapping of that, you know, in the future. Let's take a look at the Sportsman's Adventures, which is our national brand. We are on Discovery, we are on Pursuit, we are on ESPN2, and all the Valley Sports, uh, regional sports networks, which there's 12 of them throughout the country, and we'll get into that in a minute. Any questions about the Florida Insider Fisher Report before we move on to Sportsman's? Nope. Okay, we'll move on. So Sportsman's Adventures <clears throat> airs, as we said, on Pursuit Channel, 35 million potential households uh, each week. Pursuit up. They have 90 million potential TVs that have been preloaded. Any Samsung TV that has been bought by anybody in the last three years has Pursuit up uh, for free as an additional potential area where they can watch it. The airtime zone Pursuit is 26 weeks. We air the first and second quarter, January through June, four times a week, 104 shows Tuesday night prime time 6 p.m. a Saturday morning at the beginning of their fishing block at 7 a.m. 11 30 p.m. on Saturday night and then Sunday night uh, 7 30 p.m. as well and then discovery we are January through June 26 weeks one time a week 8 30 a.m. on Sunday mornings 80 million potential households everybody knows who discovery is we also air on ESPN uh, two May through June, it was five weeks. It was at 7 uh, a.m. on Saturday mornings. It's going to be this year it will be seven weeks instead of five. It'll be the same time Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. and 80 million potential households. Then we also mentioned Valley Sports, all their regional sports networks. So there's 50 million potential there April through March on uh, Valley Sports Sun, 52 weeks a year. We air there 156 shows, Thursday, 6.30 a.m., Friday at 10 a.m., and then Sunday night uh, at 8 uh, p.m. every Sunday night. And then on the regional sports networks, which there's 12 other ones, we air July through December, third and fourth quarter. We air 48 times a week. So if you we air on each one of those regional sports networks four times a week because there's 12. That's how you get the 48 per week for a total of 1,248 shows. Here's an example of where those uh, 12 regional sports networks are. As you can see, we get Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama. Um, so there's a lot of people that visit Florida can be exposed to the Discover Crystal River area. Dis an added value in 2022, Sportsman's Adventures did a uh, show there, and this is what the trailer looked like that we created, which we do for each and every episode. And as that show rotates every 13 weeks, we create a new trailer to promote, again, the show and where it can be found. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Oh. Right in the corner of the mouth. So pretty. This might sound funny, but I think I'd stop counting the doubles. <laughs> Good fish, man. Yeah, dude. There's the vision right there. So as you can see, Sportsman's Adventures is an in-the-field type of show. It's not a fishing report show like the Florida Insider Fish Report. It's a 30-minute show. Uh, each week we change and we uh, go to a different destination. And as part of the criteria with Discover, uh, Discovery is that we have the ability to show food, we show lodging, we show lifestyle, as well as we show the fishing. So that's the idea of what each one of those episodes looks like. Here's a package that we created with inside of that show. Undoubtedly, the Crystal River area has all kinds of activities for the whole family, and one of the most popular is scalloping. 
In this area, the season runs from July to September. All you need to do is snorkel, look around for these guys, and pick them up. You're allowed to harvest two gallons per person or 10 gallons per boat. Just don't forget your fishing license. Once Rick and Mario are ready to pack it up for the day, the loot is handed over to a local family that has learned how to shuck the delectable meat that will be prepared for dinner at the West 82 Bar and Grill, which is located on the resort property. Plantation on Crystal River is known as the premier resort on Kings Bay. Their 196 rooms offer a sophisticated old Florida feel with all the comforts of home. The spacious guest rooms allow you to have a restful night so you can be ready for the fun in the sun when you awake. If you need more room, the resort also has 12 villas with two floors of space that includes a kitchen and living room. When you're ready to explore, the Plantations Adventure Center is the hub for all activities on the water. Besides the 1,600 feet of dockable seawall, the full-service marina and dive shop has everything you need to enjoy a day on the water and in the water. For the golfers, Plantation on Crystal River boasts an exclusive Central Florida Golf Resort. Golf enthusiasts can mix and match for the 27 competitive and challenging holes. Forgot something? The golfers can get the latest in sportswear and equipment at the pro shop. And after a full day of either being on the water or on the course, there's nothing like lounging by the pool. In fact, as soon as you get off the boat, you can be steps from the large lagoon-style pool that sits right on the riverfront with a tiki bar and hot tub. Or, if you feel like some pampering is needed, the Spa Blue brings an unprecedented level of comfort and relaxation to guests. Treatments and services such as facials, massage therapy, manicures, pedicures, and full hair salon make it one of a kind. In just five minutes from the resort property, Crystal River Town Square is part of a unique and historic downtown area. There, you can find a collection of shops, restaurants, and fun places to explore. When it's time to eat, the plantation on Crystal River has you covered. Unwind with your favorite drink at the West 82 Bar. Then, dine by the bay as Chef Jason prepares your entree with the finest natural, local ingredients. And if you brought the kitchen your catch, you can have a feast especially if it's scallop season. So don't wait. Visit plantationoncrystalriver.com because at any time of the year is a good time for the perfect vacation. So guys, that gives you a ch uh, an opportunity to really see how our production <laughs> capabilities can promote one of your areas. And certainly that was about Crystal River. We know that you guys have Inverness and Floral City Ozella, you have Homosassa with inside of your region. So we could potentially do shows based out of those areas. All of these show ideas have been suggestion by uh, John and his team as to what they would like to see. But there's an example of how we can really cover your destination and promote the region fully through creating shows out of different cities with inside of the region. Let's talk about the viewership. Again, this is Nielsen rated numbers. So on Discovery, we received 8.7 million viewers in the 26 weeks. On Pursuit, we received 7 million in the 26 weeks. And then on the Valley Sports, now remember, there's 12 different networks throughout the country that are promoting uh, the show or airing the show, I should say. So we received 57 million uh, viewers in 39 weeks of airing there. So let's talk a little bit about Prime, uh, the videos that we do on streaming. We understand that a lot of people are uh, on the go and they don't necessarily pay expensive cable charges. And so there's some different areas that they can go to and watch 
for us. So our immediate content streams on all the platforms below. Uh, the data provided to us that we're going to show you was provided by YouTube, Pursuit Up, and Prime Video. Our immediate videos have streamed over 7 million minutes in 2021, and the number is excluding Discovery Go and those Valley Sports uh, 12 different uh, networks. In social media wise, you know, we understand it's really important to talk to the, the different uh, genres of social media. So we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. In 2021, we received four point, uh, I mean, four million reached on Facebook, 5.4 million reached on Instagram, 3.6 million reached on YouTube. We had 127, 430 website sessions. And then that equated to four, uh, three million, uh, 341,284 clicks. Remember that Discover Crystal River uh, receives two posts per month, and we're talking to 353,000 followers amongst those uh, Instagram, Facebook, and other social pages for us. Here's some examples of some of the posts that we've made in the past. We also want you to know that instead of doing TikTok, we do Instagram Reels. Um, there's so many platforms out there you can't possibly keep up, uh, but we just play with inside of our social platforms. We received 235,000 on the post on the left, 86,000. So our Instagram Reels are pretty big for us, and those are places. Uh, certainly things that you guys will be involved in as well as a sponsor of Sportsman's Adventures. So we want to tell you a little bit about the RM Media content now airs on the Captain Rick Murphy YouTube channel. We created a one channel to support all the things and all the employees that we have and all the different things that they do. So those fishing report shows, the Florida Insider Fisher Report, Sportsman's Adventures, real life YouTube videos, they're all uploaded now in one location instead of having a channel for each one of our brands. RM Media has now begun to treat YouTube as an additional network for those fishing report shows. So we're publishing them live on Thursday as well as they go up on the network for those people who don't have cable. So they can still get the information, they can still get exposed to your region as well. They're, the the uh, commercials are also aired on YouTube, so your commercial will be airing there as the average watch time of the viewers are spent on the channel is 1,000 hours per week. Uh, total viewership last year was 1 million views, and the average weekly viewership on the Captain Rick Murphy channel is 25,000 people a week are watching. Uh, Captain Rick Murphy YouTube channel now has 16,900 subscribers since it began in the fourth quarter of 2020, uh, 2019. And as you can see, here's some of our thumbnails of what you can click on. The second one there is certainly the show that we did in uh, Crystal River. Any questions, guys? Well, we appreciate the time. We know how busy and how much stuff you guys have to go over. I guess John will take it from here if you do actually, have any actually, questions for us. I do, I do have one question. Um, this is Holly Davis. Uh, back to the um, sweepstakes that we ran in 21, I think it was. Um, yes. You said we had 909 entries. Do we get email addresses or anything from that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I believe I, I I forget who the contact we dealt with for that was, but I, I did send it to them. Um, I can resend those to you guys. Uh, yeah, we've, we've I'll send them to you. No, them. this is I, I'm I'm only a year into the or not even a year into the chairmanship, so I'm just trying to, you know, get. I ask some silly questions sometimes because I'm <laughs> new to the board. Yes, ma'am. We got um, a list from them immediately after the contest, and mm -hmm. they've been uploaded into our um, IDSS. System. I assume that that would be the case, but I just wanted to make sure. That's it. That was a simple question. <laughs> so, Mike, I got something for you. One of the coolest things I ever did is I got to go to see Alabama against Penn State when Joe Paterno's last year. And I saw your Penn State shirt, and I just, man, it was just one of the coolest things I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, guys, if there's no other questions for us, I think uh, John and Terry can take it from here. And uh, we look forward to potentially working with you guys. Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks you very so much, much Rick. You guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And um, on our roll call, are we, we've we added Dr. Yeah, Desai we'll make sure that that's for the minutes and everything. And Mike cool. Engels. Well, yeah, I had Mike. I knew he was phoning in. Okay. Yeah. So um, I really brought this forward because of um, it's a national show. You know, I've, I've, I've said that I think what we do with them on the recurring new content is um, where I think our better spot is. That's why we've paired with with that one and with uh, Mike Anderson. So we have people that are wanting to fish, know what's happening on immediately. Uh, but this is something different with the, having an option as, as a, a national exposure. Um, so that's that's really the reason I brought it forward. Because like I said, I think that we have enough episode on regional television type things as is. So um, of the of the list of numbers there, I think that the um, the first one is the is if we were going to move forward would be my suggestion that the I guess it's like the base package which still is pretty substantial um, in terms of what we, in terms of reach and and also cost but um, we're going to have we have enough money to do it uh, I've been working with budget I didn't have the number um, in time for this meeting but it is much more than what's on your special projects spreadsheet. Uh, I'll have that for the next meeting. So we'd have more than enough to cover it if, if the board thinks it's uh, worth moving forward to. May I add something? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reason I brought this to, to John's attention and um, was primarily the reach um, through Madam Media's numbers that we're getting on the research and the data, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, those are all numbers that are increasing for us. So this gives us that reach uh, for that market, which we don't really have. You know, we're just now starting to realize the importance of those. So. so the so, I'm so, class, so. <laughs> so the the so as you're flipping through looking for the number, ninety thousand dollars is the is the base package number, and. Uh, and it, like I said, it is. There's a significant amount of reach, uh, especially because there, we get the replays on the on the regionals as well. But um, I thought that that's the main reason I, I thought it was it worth uh, a, a full discussion from the board. And to be clear, we've done package A before. No, no, no. no this is brand new. This all is, of this is brand all this new. is this is a brand okay. new proposal. We hadn't done anything um, on this. Because uh, he kept referring to. 20 and 21. That was the what Florida Insider Fishing, Fishing Report. 30, 35 is our is our for the for the sponsorship that he talked about at the beginning, where it's April okay. to September, and that's the that's the constant churning of new Florida content. Florida region. For excuse me. It's the Florida region. It's Florida yep. Insider Fishing Report. Right. Yeah. Only right. airs within that smaller region. So yeah. this is a proven entity for us. We've gotten really mm -hmm. good results from them on a yep. much smaller package, and now we're looking to expand with them. Yep. And Got it. So um, I don't know if it, it would be an ongoing thing as the price point. You know, when you look at what we what our actual starting marketing budget, that's you know, a quarter, no, a fifth, give or take. And so, but I think it is worthy for a special projects, and then we can and we can address Evaluate. it as going going forward if it's something that uh, we can make adjustments if it's something that we think is a ongoing thing like the uh right the fishing report have, have we got any way to measure uh, the response of this john like i mean i don't even know so if, if someone comes to fish from louisiana as opposed to inside florida we're doing inside fishing report i mean i don't know i'm just uh, i mean i see how it could be effective if we got any way whatsoever to try to get any kind of accountability on the spend the 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 Madden platform we have does have points of interest uh, where we can see where we where you where they track you with your phone. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a it's a sliver of the total visitation, mm -hmm. but we can see that uh, it's also very much like an exposure. 
uh, situation too that we don't um, that we're not currently doing. Like Terry mentioned, we're not reaching those those other uh, destinations broader than the state. Right. Board, any other comments or questions? I mean, just so if I understand it correctly, there's two packages in front of us. There's the ninety thousand dollar one that includes the two shows a week or for mm -hmm. this destination, plus the billboards, and then a yep. thirty second commercial on the Valley Sports Networks. Mm -hmm. um, and then the hundred fifty thousand dollar proposal would jump that thirty second commercial into the Discover Channel, mm -hmm. the Pursuit Channel, the whatever channel. Yep. So we'd still get the billboard. We get everything in package A, and then the other is the minus and. Um, it does take us just again, maybe I'm a little more intimately aware of this kind of stuff. Florida Insider Fish Report, I think, has been arguably successful, well received, looks good, you know. Um, but it's really regional, it's Florida and maybe a little bit of Alabama, a little bit of Mississippi, a little bit of South Georgia, depending on who's getting what cable network systems. With the when the again, it's a totally separate show, Sportsman's Adventure is a 30 minute format. And they do this the traditional kind of fishing TV show where it's, hey, I'm here, I'm in this area, I'm fishing, I'm doing a great thing. And um, that now reaches us out into what you saw from regional to national. So 35,000 for Florida, 90,000 for the rest of the country. Um, does, and, and I, you know, to my, again, I, you know how my guys feel about the outdoors and boating and fishing and scalloping. We have to continue to play in the niche scenario because we don't have enough money to put billboards on the subways in New York City and try to reach 10 million people that may or may not read us. Um, so for the same money, we can get to the people that want to get in their truck or their car, bring their boat, hire a captain, come up and do what we still have to offer as a thing to do in this area, along with the family-friendly side of scalloping manatee tours, maybe throw a little golf course in there for you, G, um, as we you. go along um, with us and whoever else. And I think the destination is just we're still prime and ripe for that market around us. Where's the, where are the Texas people coming? Where are the Alabama people going to go after they've done their deal? South Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee. Got to put Tennessee in there. By the way, Alabama's playing Tennessee this week. Um, <laughs> right. I hadn't heard anything about that. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the whole state of Florida went mute to Tennessee after last weekend. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I looked at it, and Rick's got a good name. He's, he's out there. For the $90,000 package, I think it comes to $58 a show. Yeah. And for the $150,000 package, it's $97 a show that we might be in. So. And it's national. That's, and that's mm -hmm. national. So, well, regionally nationally. Then you add it on right. the, the Facebook and add on the, yep. the streaming YouTube services, so which is still yeah. somewhat, I guess it's more measurable, but still an enigma to some degree. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, there's not a it's necessarily the funnel, like some things where it funnels you to a purchase point, but it is... It, you know, you're, it's it's another set of eyes, certainly. And then the only, I'll just on the other side, there are other national shows, but they don't have the familiarity with us. They don't have a lot of the B-roll stock footage already in place. They don't have, you know, maybe the intimate um, information for us. There's only a few really strong national TV fishing shows. Just like I don't know if you guys know this, there's really only one national fishing magazine. If you don't, for just fishing, sport fishing magazine, if you take away field and stream and other things, everything else is regional. Florida Sportsman, you know, Georgia Hunt and Fish, you know, it's like, so it's, it, the national market in this industry is not as broad scoped as you can get other media channels to do. Mm -hmm. And it's a special project. Yeah. Yeah. It's money just sitting in a bank doing nothing for us. Right. Yeah. All right. Are you looking for a motion on that then, or just board direction? No, well, yeah, we'd need a motion so we could so we could move whatever amount of money. I'm also. I would like to say I, uh, that we haven't discussed the conservation add-on. No, that's a fifteen thousand dollar. Those are fifteen thousand a pop. Sixty grand. There's a minimum four. Yeah, so it's a, that's a that's 60, 60. That's a sixty. Just yeah. g given how we're always fighting the manatee aspect, is there anything to be? Should we look at that? Or what? What is the board's pleasure in terms of A, B, and C? What are we thinking? So C is given the. Well, we are in the grass initiative. <coughs> yeah, I mean we. Adding that in there. Um, I mean we are doing with the <coughs> augmented reality on the conservation side, and as we okay. as we're building that out, I I think that might be. Um, more effective uh, as than than these uh, spots 
pure manatee, yes. Yeah, I mean, versus, I think yeah. that's I think that's probably we have greater. I thought chance that was of, probably the answer, but I didn't yeah. want to just not discuss it. No, I, I looked at that and I just I that, that was my thought when I it's just I don't think that those fifteen or whether they're like a minute and a half spots. I just thought mm -hmm. that wasn't um, that wasn't a, a I think there, our augmented reality page is better. Yep, a better vehicle for that. Okay. Since we control the message and we can add and add to it every t as, as we see fit. So, what do we feel about A and B? <laughs> I really both. Go ahead. I'll talk a lot. No, no, I just my quick question was that he had mentioned like moving around the region. So, mm -hmm. I'm I'm excited to hear that because we have a lot of bass fishermen yep. and they could care less about mm -hmm. saltwater. And I know a lot of saltwater don't care about fresh, but since we're surrounded on three sides by water. We need to push the whole water thing. So um, well, I, I, I was excited to hear, and I hope we'll be able to work in something about the east side. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think that's yeah. it. I think that's the uh, a plus of having two shows. Yeah, you know, one show it's 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 difficult to <clears throat> to cover both of. But I think I think and he's been open to it in the past. So I think that um, having that opportunity with two shows is. A good choice, good choice, and I think honestly, if we're paying him money, we do get <laughs> some yeah, say in what happens, right? He, he mentioned <laughs> that on page 11, mm -hmm. you know, Ozella yeah. Fishing Village, Inverness, Floral yep. City combined bass show, right? Yep. For the sample itineraries he was throwing out there, and being that it's a national show, a lot of other regions in the U.S. have a lot more interest in freshwater fishing versus full, if it's so Florida right. focused, it's all salt water. And also, Jackie, just you know, I spoke to the other fishing show that we do regionally uh, just yesterday, and they're going to do a fish and hunt, and they're going to do the hunt on the Floral City Inverness side of the. Okay. Yeah. Who's the other fishing show that we do? Uh, Mike Anderson, Real Animals. Okay. We don't do anything with CA anymore, do we? Used to do something. <coughs> we no, used to. We did, but they those are um, <clears throat> like I said, that's the episodes, the the, the one ofs, and so I thought. When we when we shifted to just spend a little bit more money or the same amount of money, the uh, the new content made more sense. Okay. Do we also get the content to use at our discretion? Mm -hmm. Pictures, photo, video, yep. so we can add to our library that way. Yes. Okay. Without paying an extra five or ten grand for a video right. photo shoot. No, yeah, we get we will get B roll things. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I guess the real question to me is. The commercials, if I understand it correctly, so we get two shows that feature us. So they're out in the boat, they're yep. doing whatever, and then every but every one of the thirteen week series, there is a thirty second commercial on the package A with Bally Sports. Okay. With package B, we would then have on all thirteen, which they do twenty six weeks, two two seasons more or less. We would get a thirty second commercial on all thirteen slash twenty six shows. So is the extra what's Ninety minus sixty thousand dollars worth thirty seconds of exposure four times a week twenty six weeks in those other markets is the question. I mean, to me, obviously, if we have the money, I'm good for either one of them. But is the real question to me is is the extra sixty grand worth the thirty second commercial twenty six weeks every week, no matter who what destination they're they're presenting, for us to continue to have that top of mind awareness as we move forward. So don't know until we try. It. I think it would be great if we find a greater way to track the actual whatever. But when Doctor decides to start to call me Mary Motel, we know we're getting full. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we think? There's money in special projects. How oh, much? I, know, I know there is. It's but how um, much about it when you're like almost a million. Bucks well, because we remember the last meeting, we we um, moved that 350 back into special projects so that the river walk all comes out of the capital mm -hmm. fund. So I'm working with budget to get the final number because they're they're moving things around. But so th that's coming back so that at least adds to the number that you have before you. So we'd put it seven or eight hundred at this point. And then uh, there was a couple other points about um, our reserve fund is when what does that start at? And so I had a discussion like we we have 60 percent every year is set aside in the reserve for a calamity, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I think budget was every time we added, they were doing that as as the budget. 
So I think there's some more coming back because we've discussed, you know, the budget is what we start October one. <clears throat> if we add money, that's not the budget. That's a that's an in, influx. So that'll change, and some of that some of that money will come back. So like I said, there's there's a significant chunk. I just don't have the exact number today. I will have to for the next meeting. But there's more than enough to cover this package. So we have the money, so we move. Right. Yeah. So what's your pleasure, Ford? Make a motion. Okay. I move we take 150. I second. I'll second. Okay. Okay. So, all right, and then we'll we'll do like we normally will run this run this through Madden as a as the sign off, and we'll make sure we um, to make it easier and, and cleaner. So that that was going to be my question from an ad agency standpoint. It always drives me nuts when clients go off the reservation and don't tell me what they're doing. Yes, <laughs> on their own. No. So yes. No, we no, we've talked to them. Integrated about this, efforts are always they, good. They, it's really it's it's really um, more the um, the finance side of you know paying them than it is any. Of the, we we work with Rick and the team about setting up the creative and all that sort of thing. It's mostly the mechanics of of paying for the paying for the TV show. Oh, from my perspective, it's just to make sure it's an integrated strategy across the whole yeah. team. Yes. You know. So anyway, all right, we've got a motion and a second. Any public comment? Any further board discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion Mike, carries Mike thumbs up and <laughs> in the comfort in. Uh, okay, uh, all right, so next we have um, Hayworth uh, Creative here for uh, an update on all our PR efforts from the past year. Uh, Brittany Gerton will be doing that. Good morning. Um, I think we have a presentation that we will be no, sharing. Be, yeah. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for your patience. It's going to be a long meeting today, I believe. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Maria Hayworth as well. She's also here. Uh, she's um, our president and the um, Thank you. Thank you. So just testing. All right, great. Well, as I said, my name is Brittany Gerton. Um, I am a Florida native and I truly love representing the Discovery Crystal River area. I uh, grew up coming here to Scallop, so uh, <laughs> had a little bit of firsthand knowledge with that. But um, I'm first just gonna share a little bit, oop, let them get everything set. Thank you. So just share a little bit about Hayworth PR first and foremost. Uh, we are a boutique but full service PR agency and we specialize solely in travel and tourism. So we represent clients big, small, of all budgets, but um, specifically in the travel, tourism and hospitality industry. Um, and this is our fourth year now uh, that we will be representing the account. We are contracted through Madden and uh, we started in fiscal year 20. So again, very proud to represent the destination um, and I would say pretty well versed at this point knowing all the wonderful features that this destination offers. Uh, following the lead of the marketing plan that uh, was adopted by the TDC and of course uh, developed in conjunction with probably everyone in this room, <laughs> uh, we decided to focus on three main strategies for the PR campaign. Uh, we recognize there's clearly a high demand for the weekends and so of course driving more traffic to midweek stays is a big priority for us um, and by targeting the right people who are environmentalists who are interested in coming here to truly explore the destination um, we were able to do that we also tried to target uh, you know kind of getting back to our flight and longer drive markets but of course remained adaptable and flexible uh, with COVID still making headlines we did end up focusing more on drive markets. Um, again, just being nimble and being, um, you know, ready to ready to target the right audiences, knowing <laughs> who can truly come here and would want to enjoy themselves. Um, we also um, are targeting the right people. So that idea of quality over quantity, um, we know certain publications will speak to a more affluent audience. And so by targeting the right people, um, we really wanted to go after high-end publications, publications that focus specifically in the niches such as, you know, aviation or yachts, things like that, a higher-end audience. Um, and of course, sticking true to our uh, target markets that Madden has shown in the data. Um, they come here, they spend the money, and we know they are tried and true. 
So here are our fiscal year 22 analytics. Uh, we are very proud of these numbers. It was a wonderful year. We certainly saw a research in travel and travel media as well. Um, they are just as busy right now. And so these metrics indicate awareness, but they also represent intent to travel. Um, it's great to read an article, but as soon as someone clicks on it, you know, leaves a comment, saves it maybe on social media, there's a higher intent to travel there. And so it's great when you see the public relations metrics not only promote awareness of the destination, but start to really funnel people through um, to to purchase, you know, to the purchase point of making a visit. Uh, wanted to note, of course, these outcomes are in thanks to the Crystal River businesses and our local partners. They are the ones hosting. They are the ones feeding our media. You know, they're the ones getting them out on the water for all these wonderful adventures. Um, and it's important to note, too, with public relations, we call it earned media. Um, but these are certainly not earned by luck. <laughs> we are very strategic. We promote. We collaborate. And we use the research to lead the way to re make sure that we're uh, working with the publications that are going to reach the right target audience. Um, we also just wanted to share what we do mostly. We host media in market, share destination news, and then we leverage our media relationships as an agency. Uh, I thought this was interesting to note. Uh, Jody and I work closely to customize the itineraries for visiting media, and they typically include five to 10 different businesses on those itineraries. So we had almost 30 press visits last year. Uh, I'll let you do the math there. But again, just trying to get writers out and about. Uh, it's wonderful to know that it's the manatee capital of the world, but it's also wonderful for them to meet local business owners, hear these wonderful stories of you know families owning these businesses for years after years. And so that's what really makes the, the story special. It's great experiences, but it's also that friendly face that you're going to see when you come to visit here. Um, I also just thought it was important to note, uh, once they visit, it doesn't stop there. We have a media distribution list, and as we're sending out releases, we just actually recently sent a fall events uh, blog and release out. We're keeping them engaged. And so now that they've been here, they have a better perspective, but they can continue helping us tell the Crystal River and uh, surrounding cities stories. So here is... Uh, here are some examples of some initiatives and coverage from the last year. I know that you guys are aware of the Galentine's fam that we had with three women who came and did manatee tours and fishing and all sorts of fun activities. Um, and I know that was quite a splash. Um, but we also um, had a really great season for scalloping. Um, it was... I one of the bigger pushes that we've done in the past few years. And so uh, very excited. That was a Southern Living piece. We actually had a Southern Living writer come down and that was a great article. And then other that's, uh, other publications such as Sarasota Magazine, which, you know, great drive market and highly affluent. Um, so by leveraging our network of travel writers, constantly pitching the destination and securing um, hosted media, we have definitely placed quite a few great stories. And also, let me go back. Um, I wanted to mention I just did the September report, and if you received the USA Today Go uh, Escape publication, Crystal River was mentioned in that as a result of our pitch. So very excited to see that land this past month. Uh, here are some examples of the releases that we then repurpose sometimes into blogs. Uh, definitely trying to work smarter, not harder. And so if it's content for the site, it's usually a great opportunity to pitch media as well. Um, of course, we're trying to promote things that are timely, such as fall events, but then there's wonderful accolades as well, like the TripAdvisor bucket list accolade that we were happy to help share about. Um, and I know we have a murals blog coming up soon. So again, trying to highlight all the wonderful things to do outdoors, but just other, sometimes it's about, you know, downtown Crystal River or the dining scene, you know, in the four different cities. So again, just trying to uh, create variety in what we're pitching and make sure that it is truly authentic to the destination as well. So our presentation is pretty short and sweet. <laughs> um, that was a, a general recap of last year, but we certainly want to continue uh, into fiscal year 23 and gear up for another great year. Um, we have a wonderful marketing plan and a great amount of research again, so we can be very strategic and try to target the right publications and reach the right audiences. Um, and so... Um, I just wanted to note a few special projects we uh, have on our radar for next year. Um, we have seen 
so many media requests around the manatee season as well as the environmental efforts with the eelgrass. And so we are going to prepare a new manatee season fact sheet in conjunction with Save Crystal River and hoping to get FWC and the, the refuge and just all the important stakeholders. Um, all of our messages in one place. And so that way the whole community can be singing the same song, be updated about the restoration efforts, our current state of manatees, et cetera. Um, so of course we can try to combat uh, some of the, you know, some of the coverage around manatees that sometimes they use our photo, but then they're talking about somewhere else. So <laughs> we'll have that fact sheet. Um, we also were talking about maybe a cycling fam that can focus more on the Inverness side of town, tie that in with Elvis and the Strawberry Festival, just, you know, try to leverage uh, the fun opportunities on that part of town. And then we want to do another mid-season scalloping push again, uh, next summer because we know it starts so strong in July and then again, you know, quite a few months that it lasts. So those are just some of the uh, initiatives that we have on the docket for next year. Um, and of course, the local businesses are integral to the success. Mm -hmm. So some of the ways that they can get involved are listed on this slide. And um, you know, if you have any questions, happy to take those. I know I can talk pretty quickly. So <laughs> if there's anything you'd like me to uh, re you know, revisit, uh, please let me know. Um, I have one question. Yes. Um, I have a 30 something years in private and uh, business aviation yes. marketing. So what are you doing on the aviation side? I'm just curious. Well, or if you need any help, I'm always <laughs> Well, I noticed that, that you are a commercial pilot with instrument ratings. So, mm -hmm. uh, But we have on our media list quite a few publications. Mm -hmm. We have not been able, we're, we're basically building that relationship right now. We're trying to make sure that they're, we're on their radar. They know that we're a destination for people of an affluent audience. But any relationships that you have, I'm always happy to take are an assist. Are you familiar with the term $100 hamburger run? No. <laughs> it's a big. Like I, know. I know. Well, I'm With guessing. Today's gas prices, it's more like a $200 yep. hamburger run. I'm assuming you fly, grab lunch, head back home. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, and another thing, I'm also a seaplane pilot, and I would love to see our lakes get basically a seaplane base there. Okay. Um, I think that would be really ideal long term. Um, it also gives us something else to do on the west side of the county. Mm -hmm. Is that or, excuse me, east side. Over Pardon? Landon and Henderson? <laughs> I have actually. I, I shot. I shot. Seven, I shot seven landings in a lake there one time. And I'll wait lake next amphibian. time, and you better tip a wing or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you. But certainly, you know, um, flying directly into either Crystal River or Inverness Airport, and mm -hmm. and doing something for a couple of days and flying out. I mean, that's absolutely. I'm, I'm glad to see it on the list because that's certainly the type of folk that we want to bring into the county as well. Yes, and thank you for that. Yeah. We've so. also been in talks with um, Bright Runner over there in Inverness about mm -hmm. um, do, they're thinking about uh, getting some helicopters to do some helicopter tours, which is something that we can help them advertise whenever that comes to fruition, and they'd be able to actually go over both Inverness and Crystal River mm -hmm. for a longer tour as well as um, when they have these fly-in events there at the Inverness Airport, us stepping up to help pl plan some itineraries and some off-site activities, as well as help them find lodging when it comes time for mm -hmm. those kind of events. So we've definitely been, I've been involved in talks with them over there to try and there's actually, there's already long-standing events at Crystal River Airport that they're probably really bad at telling y'all about. <laughs> so in August, there's an annual um, event there. And in the old days when we had a glider, my dad would go up and do a full glider aerobatics routine to music right over the airport. Mm -hmm. But there is a spot landing contest and a bomb drop contest, and it's a flower sack, and you throw it out the window and try to hit yes. a target. And it's a lot of fun. Um, I've embarrassed myself in that competition multiple years. <laughs> and so that happens every early August. Um, and then they also do air tours. Um, I gave air tours when I was a teenager there, okay. I, you know, so they do air tours right now all the time. So, and that's less expensive, a lot less expensive than a helicopter ride. So I think a lot of people do like to take helicopter tours and I would be fully on board. Hopefully they'll, that'll come through. For right rudder but um right now you can sell air tours 
Well, thank you for that recommendation. We know, I remember one of the first things I learned is there were more RV sites than hotel rooms. So we certainly have a unique destination and it sounds like another opportunity to Mm -hmm. attract the right audience. (laughs) Yeah, my parents sold that company several years ago and gosh, I think it's been five years now. And the owner lives in New Jersey, so he's a little... Um, he keeps commuting back and forth, and so he doesn't quite have his feet under him on bringing that company back up to where it should be. COVID really knocked him sideways because that happened right after he bought the company. Oh. And then, who would be the best contact, Holly? Um, to some degree, me. I'm sort of ad hoc, starting to work on their marketing a little bit. But um, James Chen is the owner, or my stepmother Goody Davis. Well, Brittany and I can definitely work on a fun release and trying to get a a couple of press trips involved if Mm -hmm. they're willing Mm -hmm. to work with us on that. I have, um, I no longer, because I don't handle any Mm -hmm. aviation accounts with my own firm anymore. I've lost most of the, most of the press people I knew have retired. However, um, one of my dear friends and mentor is fully, he's who I do marketing with now. Um, for aviation clients, he's got all those contacts. So if you need contacts in the press industry, you know, Thank you. <laughs> with aviation press, um, I'm happy to hook you up with my friend. Okay. Thank you very much. And so. Thank you for taking that note of who to contact Terry. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's it. Is there any other questions or anything? Oh, and one other note that the school in Crystal River, I think, has served <clears throat> students from 60 countries now, mm-hmm. something like that. It's a international. It's a big international draw, and they come here and they spend money for a long time. Thank you. Yeah, so. I know with the cyclists, the seven mile loop that was just designated mm-hmm. and one of the national trails. So that will be that's an example of something we will now take and you know it puts us. Uh, we can tout that news, and then we can also work it into itineraries. You know, it can be a part of the fam, and mm-hmm. so just trying to find those uh, unique to Crystal River opportunities. So awesome. There Thank you. Go. Thank you. Any other comments? Peanut Buster Parfait Run. (laughs) (laughs) That would actually be a hilarious ad to put in, or a blog or something in aviation media. (laughs) Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Next one should be quick. Uh, The meeting dates. uh, I don't know if we need a motion for that. It's. I don't think there currently isn't any conflicts. We made sure it wasn't didn't fall on um, September, any holidays. Uh, September thirteenth falls on FAC for what it's worth. Okay. Well, if we we can move that as as needed, if, okay. um, when we get closer to that. But I, I think we missed any of the actual the formal holidays. So with a, um, with a new board and um, new administrator, mm-hmm. it's quite possible we'll have more staff going to FAC okay. in the future. So it's just to keep it in mind. All right. All right. Um, are we looking for a motion? I move approval. Yes. Okay. Second. Okay. Sleep Y'all are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> First by Jackie Hepner, second by Cindy Guy. Any public discussion? Any further board discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do we still have Mike with us? Uh, yeah, he's just, yeah. just can't see him. Um, so the uh, the grant program is the next item for discussion. Um, what I'm looking for to help with is creating it a little bit more flexibility uh, that I thought we had, but it did not. Um, uh, for certain special projects that that are events that may not uh, that don't fit the window if we want to keep a window those are some of the questions do we want to have that set window where people apply do we want to make it just totally ad hoc they just you know when when one comes in we run it through the through the system and, and put it on the agenda um, why do we have grant windows now I inherited it I think is essentially it. Uh, where we've always done it. Well, there is a, it did. It, one thought One of was, my most hated phrases in the world, if it ain't broke, yeah. don't fix it. Well, one of the, one of the things was that, that we could blast out the information and say, here's your window. And cause to, to apply to get money, we could still do the same thing if we just take them as it, as it comes. But it was, um, 
I don't have a, I don't have a real preference. I thought uh, keeping it as as a packet made it a little easier. So there was just one time you read ten grants and it was complete. Um, I think that's what it was, John. It was more if we took them at any time, people would come to us all the time. Yes. If we had money and people had to think about it and we were going to give away money, then they would all have to come at once and we could evaluate them against each other. I think that was the thought. Now, whether that's yeah. a good thought or not, I don't know. But I think that was the thought. How many grant cycles do we have currently? Just one. An annual? That's it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> but we don't have... we. <clears throat> It's, it's generally the same applicants. We, we have not seen a whole lot of uh, new, new, new options, new people. Um, and when, in when the past, when we, when somebody's come in out of cycle and they were funded, they were reminded next year if you're going to do this again, here's the cycle. This is when you need to get your paperwork in, and they either did or didn't. You know, they either join the, join the cycle or they didn't want to deal with the paperwork, whatever. And, and we've worked hard to make the paperwork as painless as possible. Um, but it is still, it's still paperwork. And most of these things are, are volunteer run organizations. And so um, there's a little bit extra effort. So something we just did on 4CF board, we had two grant cycles a year mm -hmm. and we went to an annual with a because of the way our funding goes, like our funding is based on what our investment portfolio is doing. So you can imagine the dive it took this year, right? And so what we decided to do is just do an annual, but then if we did not award all the money in the annual, there would be a mini cycle later mm -hmm. in the year. So we would reopen it and advertise that we have more money six months later. Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing it out there as one yeah. thing that another board decided to do. We always have money. Yeah, this this comes That's, right. This we is a completely different Yeah, situation. this comes out of the special projects. And yes, and we, um, the previous destination, we had a, a pot of money. And that and that's how it worked out. We broke down the ratios and things like that. But that was. Um, um, what if we what if we stick with an annual cycle, but create an exemption, create a, if the board, if we vote that we think we want to exempt ourselves out of that? And make an exception and recommend somebody that we can do that. Well, that's that's what that's what I thought we were doing. <laughs> but that's not what it said. No, correct? I know it's, that's not what it worked out to be. So you would think that we need a uh, when, in talking with legal, we, the form that I've been using, that's like the out of cycle. Mm -hmm. We need to formalize that as as a, as a ability to have that out of cycle for for spe it is like the the jam that came to us that. Legal said, we have a process. This is outside the process, so we couldn't hear it. And I lobbied every way I could, but I, ultimately that's why this is on the agenda, is we create that out of cycle opportunity. And just like I said, if they if they win, then the next year you're like, look, all right, you've got to get in the cycle and here's the dates and don't miss because this is a one of, which is pretty easy to explain to folks. But that's, um, so that's what we're that's what we're looking to do. That so there's, uh, we have the capital improvement, which is the, which is the, um, well we have two. We have the big capital one where we potential bond. That's the one that's got layers and layers of work. Mm -hmm. But nobody's uh, jumped nobody's at that one yet. On that, yeah. that was <laughs> kind of maybe be hard. maybe by design. <clears throat> well, actually, it was by design. Yeah, if you wanted to bond out the money, so we couldn't, so the board and the county couldn't possibly have any to spend. You really need to sell it and win it and have all the ducks in a row. So that is, like I said, that is difficult by design. But if it gets through the gauntlet, then it's then it's then we should do it. But like I said, nobody has uh, opted in on that one yet. Right. Um, so we do need a capital form. Uh, same like the Homosassa River project. Something that's we can even use the same form we have now and just specify some of the language about who can apply and things that uh, this is what i'm coming from from legal we need to make sure that these um grants are clear as to what they are so uh so that would be one is the capital improvement do we have the special events marketing the collateral materials do we still want to do a collateral material i mean that, that seems to be our least used 
grant, but it it does help folks when they when they apply. I mean, it's that's a it's a small amount of money that like the fifteen hundred dollars is the ceiling on on that. Well, like this is just me. I I, I don't have a problem with our grant programs, mm -hmm. like the division of them and how right. we have them set up. It just seems like if we're restricted to one time a year and something pops up that we want to fund, we, we should have the ability to do that. Yes. So, I mean, if we just had exemption language in our current programs mm -hmm. to where by a vote of the board, we could say we choose to utilize an exemption on this. We realize it's annual, but we choose to make an exception here and fund this project, then we ought to be able to do that. Because all yeah. we're doing is making a recommendation to the board, by right. the way, right? Well, so no, I, this money is budgeted, so we it just gets spent. It just gets spent. Right. If you If you say yes... Under my understanding, I've been wrong before, but that's how we've been doing it because it's it's just our budget. Um, it's just we need approval to move it into our operate or to spend it out of there from. It, from it's here. still, I mean, if you if you take my point, yes, if we, if we all sit here and decide on a system, and then we all decide that we want an exception from that system, right. Then we ought to be able to do that. What I'm hearing from legal is they they right. want <coughs> that that special project form to be what you just said. So when so if somebody like the jam that comes up, I hand them this form instead of the instead of the cycle form, and then it can be heard. Okay. So it's just it's that it's, is the exception. Right? Correct. So you don't have to vote on changing anything. It's just we have that document, so they fill that out and and it goes through whether it's an event or or anything, because that was the the hiccup this time. It was an event and it wasn't deemed. And we had the cycle, so. That would give us the flexibility we're looking for to, to keep one cycle, and then if something pops up that that oh yeah we should help them, then we have that form for them to fill out. So what do you need from us? Well, the, the, um, this discussion about it is well yeah well I'm just I'm kind of outlining well yeah that's exactly that to make yeah. sure that the board knows what we're we're moving forward. The other one we wanted to create was that meetings um, where like we we help the clerk of the courts. Oh okay. It gives Terry another tool. It's um, what I would like for it to be is that staff does it. So I don't, so it because sometimes these things are are fairly quick, and our cycle doesn't. Is it legal for well, us to spend money on that? That's well, it's it's it's, it's, it's things we already spend money on. It'd be like food or transportation, those type of things where it's just something to help augment their so event. Nice. So I'm I've read this thoroughly and now I'm starting to get really confused about exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so so there's we have the existing the existing cycles. Yes. Right for collateral and and events. Mm -hmm. We would need uh, an improved capital form for things like the river project. You know the things that are what would you say that one was sixty thousand dollars. So create that form. We create the the exception form. And then we have a meetings form, which is all based on room nights, and uh, and we, you know, there's a sliding scale on that. And so, so the the exception form, how would that go? So somebody has it's missed the grand cycle. They've mm -hmm. just popped up with a great idea for the yep. comedy series of Valerie or whatever. Right. Okay, and they contact staff, mm -hmm. and you think it's a good idea to bring forward to the board. Can they? Can that? Do we, is it a two, is it two meetings to get through this? Like we have to vote on hearing it and then hear it the next time? No. Or can, I can we rely can, on we staff? The, if we have the form, I can, I, like I send the form out to everybody. If you, then, then, then we, then when it comes here, you decide I like it or I don't and you fund but, it or not. So it, it's a okay. one cycle deal. They, they contact us. A one meeting deal. Correct. Yes. Yeah. We don't have to, they don't have to necessarily come to public comment. Uh, I asked the, I asked the capital people to come to public comment first mm -hmm. to gauge your interest because sometimes that you know that there's quite a bit of work on that versus promotion right so uh that that would be two that would be two step but <clears throat> but funding an out of cycle special event would not that would just be they contact us i send them the form and we get it on the first agenda available so we really don't Makes have sense. a grand cycle <laughs> no we do but what we we do but but we do we 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 push everybody that's on our list. Here's our thing. Gotcha. Because if you've already got money once, you're not new. Uh, then you're, the right. you're, you're a recurring. Okay. You're that a recurring sense. visitor. I like that. And yeah, there's that also sense. there's also the opportunity if you well, there, like you said, there's no exemption, but there's always the opportunity that we get less 
enthused about spending money later in the year too. <laughs> yeah, true. So yeah, so um, so what the next step is? Well, the other are we happy with the funding numbers? So like in the event grant, if you if you knock it out of the park with your room nights, the most you can get seventy five hundred dollars, and then it goes down from there. And then if you that's all that requires the tracking of rooms, and and that's that's like the Dragon Boat Festival. We really only have one thing right now that that's in that category. Everything else is generally in the fifteen hundred dollar care category for outside marketing, and they don't have to they don't have to track the room nights. That's things like the Manatee Festival, the Strawberry Festival. Um, there's a couple other ones on the list. Uh, the the Rotary, the Stone Crab Jam in the past has done that, but those are that kind of thing to help push additional people in through the door. Um, that that's been a fifteen hundred dollar level. Where are we, you know, those numbers still work for the board? Do we need to raise them, lower them? I think you should recommend it. This is what in the past has been done. It is working yeah, so or not that's working. what it, we approve. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know all the data. Right. So and the same thing for the forms. If the legal department approves, we want flexibility. Yes. If we can get the flexibility and the legal department approves, we approve it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that, I think the numbers have been on. Oh yeah, Mike. Yeah. Well, when I was sitting in the road, frankly, they didn't bother applying because the amount wasn't worth the effort. So, from their perspective, it needed to be, uh, yeah, more worthwhile than the fifteen hundred dollars for the effort for them to even bother applying. So I'd be inclined to uh, you know, talk with hotels that, you know, what what makes sense, but I think uh, higher amounts uh, may uh, attract more people, uh, take advantage of it and bring more into the area. It's all marketing dollars. I mean, we don't, we don't fund anything else out of those grants. <clears throat> so um, I think the, uh, I think the larger room night one is good, uh, you know the the t this top being seventy five hundred dollars, because um, and but I I can come back with some when I, when we bring it back and with some recommendations on on different what I understand what Mike's saying yes that is a I mean it's still paperwork we've done our best to to trim it but it is still a little bit of an effort and I I I have heard that as well so um, maybe maybe. Bump it to twenty five hundred. That was the number That's I had in my head that I was thinking that yeah. would, um, that still would be very feasible. Um, we could adjust it. We could we could adjust it all. We could bump it all up to make the ceiling ten thousand dollars if you knock it out of the park on your room nights, and because it's still all marketing dollars, we're not we're not doing any infrastructure or portalettes or any of those things like that. So it's it's um, relatively simple. On that it's marketing sure. for your event, that's right. correct. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Yes, twenty five hundred to ten thousand seems reasonable to me. Yeah. But you have to, we just have to do the backside math on what the ROI is to make sure that we get yes. the ROI back. Get the money back. I mean, yeah. if we sell every room night, what do we make per room? And like, I mean, we don't make ten thousand dollars on every room. No, night. If we sell every room in the county. We don't make ten grand. We don't make ten grand. Right. No way. Right. So we're never going to get the ROI on it. It's more about marketing, get more people. Right. Yeah, because I went down that road. I'm like, well, we're never going to make our money back on that. But you don't strictly make your money back. No, of course not. That's not what we're here so, for. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You always have to keep an eye on that, though. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's why the 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 meeting one that we were talking about is based on room nights. Yeah. And and it and it slides. Mm -hmm. So if you, you you say you're going to get 300, but you really can verify 200. Well, then you get less. That's what Mm -hmm. no, that's the that's the the way we ran the meeting one in Gainesville, uh, and it worked. It was a great tool. It helped us. It helped us edge out a lot of communities that were like size, where we could say, "Look, you do some paperwork, you can have ten grand." And it's a reimbursable amount. Yeah, it has to qualify. It has to be right. proven. Them. Yeah, right. I saw that. Um, related topic to grants. Is this a good time to talk about our meeting yesterday? Sure. So. Uh, <clears throat> John and the two city managers and I met yesterday and both both cities would like us to consider essentially a fund, an annual fund for both of them that they would be able to use to market 
various events in their cities. And me trying to make it simple, eventually said, look, the two of you get together, figure out the number that you want to ask, make sure it's the same number and give us bullet list of things that you were thinking about using it for. And then go to John and John will work with it from there and then bring it to the board. But you know, that way we have some idea of what they're doing. And then there would, I assume, have to be some sort of um, backside accounting on what they actually did oh, with we the, would, with we the would money. Run a contract. We but, did it previously uh, with Inman is when the when they had their visitor center. Yes. At, on when they were doing when the city was in, more involved with putting on events, mm -hmm. and then it, unfortunately that's when everything. <laughs> hit and so we don't know if it was going to be successful or not because all those things didn't happen so, um, so but it would be yeah there would need to be some sort of def absolutely a contract between the, the county and the municipality uh with clear deliverables and mm -hmm. and yeah <coughs> eric williams made the the he just basically said it's public and it's public funds chasing public funds so they are paying their staff to do all of these applications and then we're having to review them with our staff instead have just a little bit more trust factor between public entities and and simplify the paperwork so the end result would still be the same but it's less hours to chase that and easier planning ahead i know um ken frank said something about for your centennial doubling the firework budget for example so um, which gives them a little bit more air cover with um, citizens who are not happy about quite so many tourists in their backyard, literally. <laughs> so yeah, we'll give them the tax cut. A little bit of devil's advocate. So I city, love devil's advocate. I do that all the time. So the city of Crystal River decides they're going to go off and spend money in a way that we as a board might not agree with, but we already said we're going to give you 50 grand a year to do what you want. We have to recommend that to the board of county commissioners. How does that work? No, we get the bullet list before we give them a fund. So the cities are still, so we're going to say, we're going to set aside $100,000 each for the cities. And then they're going to come in front of us and say, here's how we want to spend it. And we're going to say, okay. Yep. Something like well, that. And there still sounds like there's paperwork being filled out. It well, sounds like it starts our process <clears throat> now. It's like they can come in front of us now and ask for money. We, we give it to them. Mm -hmm. So all you're going to say is we're going to establish a budget for them. That for a year. Yes. Right. We're going to set aside $100,000 for a year. They'll come in front of us and say, here's how we want to spend the money, and then we'll ratify that, mm -hmm. pass that up to the board. I don't have a problem with that. Is that what they said, I just, basically? I don't want to write I, I would think that would be spend the money. I think, no, no, I think that would be, that's what, that would be the process, would be that, that would, the contract, and that they would have to make the presentation, here's what we want to do. Right. Yeah. And you say, they ask for X, you say, well, we're better with Y. And right. then then we go from there, and we, set to, we do, then we do the paperwork and get it approved, and then then all the uh, tracking and everything that to the scope and everything that we make sure that they're following through and they're providing the data, they're going to have to do something for that. So it's still work. It's just different work. It's for them. well, it's one application. Yeah, no, the application is a lot easier than six applications right. having to well, come to. They also, they are, they did the fifteen hundred for collateral comment. It's like we're not you know Ken said, I'm not going to go apply for 15. I mean, it's not worth staff time to do that. So I, to my mind, and that's, the, you know, it's just much economies of scale. It's much easier to do one big pile of something yeah. for an annual. And basis. traditionally, every, like mm -hmm. the collateral has been a, a straight match. So if you mm -hmm. asked for a thousand, you had a thousand. Yep. So I, I, I any of those kind of things I think would be uh, an important, important, uh, part of the contract, especially on on printing things, I don't know that. Um, I don't think we should pay for the whole boat on a printing thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think everything everything should have input. You know, money from both sides. Well, this doesn't sound any different than what exists now, except we're going to lay out a chunk of money to motivate them That's to come correct. to us to follow our system. It's, right, we're not. You're not. You're talk, not talking about changing anything. Like you want to match, and you want to know what they're doing, and you want to count. Well, that's what we're going to start with. I mean, yeah, because right. it, yeah, it, it. No, it isn't any different because, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I don't think I know I'm not going to recommend just cut a check. Just write a check, right? No, because you. I'm uncomfortable with that. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. So oh, no, I, I am, too. If you want to hang, out, a, you wanna hang yeah. out a, a, an ornament and What's say, hey, here's 100 grand, if you yeah, want really. to come I'm I'm great with that. I, I mean, I want this. I need to, to know. Well, in, yeah, I think I need to know, and 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 the, yeah, those things should be. There should be some level of input from either municipality, especially on the printing of things. I think yeah. that's. I well, some that. some of this I think is that they needed to be heard, especially one of the two mm -hmm. needed to be heard, and felt like part of the process. Okay. So, and anything we can do to streamline paperwork and again it is a lot easier to put together one budget for a year mm -hmm. with multiple events because right now we're more tied up with per event yeah uh, application yeah. so yeah. it's it's not moving it's not moving the needle from here to here it's moving it here <laughs> yeah. you know so, so how do you decide what amount if uh, it is to be tied with the revenue we make or the percentage of a good question. i mean uh, if recession comes and our revenue comes down and they want 100,000 and we don't have, how do we do that? It's a good question. It should be a percentage of... Well, th those are all the, th those are the discussion points because right now, when I left the meeting, I said, what, this is a cloud of stuff and I can't, I don't function with that. I need you to, I need, <laughs> you, I need you to put it down and tell me what you want right. and I can tell you what we can do, what we can't do legally and then we can move from there but just this... John wow. channeling his left brain. Yeah. Please don't go I, right I, brain. It's like, on me. Yeah, it's, it's like why, that's why I make every salesperson send me an email. Like what we just said on the phone sounds great. Send me send me an email with what you just said, mm -hmm. so I can fully figure out what it is you just said. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I left yesterday. The yeah. Meeting was I. I needed I needed yeah I needed it on paper. Uh, Twenty five years of government has beat that into me. I need I need it in writing. So, uh, and then and then then it's easier to help. I don't mind Dr. Desai's suggestion of a percentage of overall revenue is, is, would be set aside for the cities to come and apply for it. Yeah. Might be an easy way to do it. That's pretty much what's going on now. We still have our parameters we have to follow of marketing outside the county. Right. To bring tourism. So they here. have to follow all the rules. But I mean, that's I mean, what we're here to do anyway. It's not just giving the city money and say, here, you know. We makes it easier. It makes it easier for that. my budgeting thing. If we, if we line item this, if it was <clears throat> X percent. Right. And so... It's, so it's not always digging into the special project. They're, like what I've heard before, if it's a good plan, start with special project and then it becomes part of the annual plan. Mm -hmm. And so that's, if we did something like that, that it certainly makes it easier for me to budget it. But- um, We're gonna set amount? We'll set amount. We'll set a percentage. A percentage. So, so good years, it's good. Yeah. Bad years, it's you okay. suffer the same fate. Well, why don't you <laughs> come back with a recommendation on a percentage? And I wouldn't okay. have a problem with that. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, are we are we moving forward to twenty five hundred ten? Well, uh, well you're going to come gonna, back. I've, gonna, I've got to rework all the stuff with legal to okay. to to get them on board with these things. Okay. Um, I just wanted to kind of get if there was some things that the board did not like, yeah. flat out didn't want to do, that would have been handy knowledge. So, um, but um, I think I think I think everybody's on board. They like the plan. They like the, they like adding the mark the the meeting component as a as a tool. Um, and then I will work with legal to, to sort out all the fine print and we'll come back so that we have flexibility and then the, um, the city's thing will be later. Okay. Right. <clears throat> and, I, and once yeah. I hear what they want and then, then we, then I'll be able to start mm -hmm. making a plan from that. But this should, this will be back in December, uh, cause Terry and I are gone for November. Um, and then we'll have, um, so we'll, maybe we'll, we'll push the, uh, push the application one month to, to make sure that we make sure that we have adequate <coughs> time, but possibly. So it'll either be January application submittal or February. And so it'll be March or April for approval. But most folks are, they're applying for the, the 20, well, I guess it'd be 24 uh, projects anyways. Mm -hmm. How is it possible we're already talking about 24? Uh -huh. But anyway. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so you, so we're not looking for a motion. Just you know, no. I, I just this is mo back. this is feedback, so I have the correct direction to go and 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 we'll bring it back. Then and then we can <coughs> then we'll move forward on. Okay. In the absence of Mike Engels, I have a silly question. Are you second vice chair? We don't yes. have a second vice chair. Second vice chair. No, we don't we have, have one. one. All right. 
Dr. Desai is in charge. I'm, oh. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> All right. Hi, Jen. <laughs> You're it. So don't Dang. do anything extreme. Oh, All right. <laughs> So Just the board. Uh, we'll move into the, oh, the re one other thing. Um, Before I start with all the money, but if you look at the money. Um, uh, yeah. it, is, it is also about money. Uh, do you want to still receive all the financial, like the individual check payments that we, that we get? With, that's included in the, in the financial packet. I mean, we, we have a summary sheet that's on the top that shows where the accounts are. <clears throat> We've been providing that thick bit of, of all the financials. It's every everything, every transaction, every month. No, I don't think it's a, it's a joke. I mean, I, I hate to admit it. I don't yeah. look at it. Mm -mm. I well, that's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's what I figured. We had we had we had one that that did, and well, now we don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He left. So, so we can streamline it. It, it should make it a summary. Yeah, yeah, that's summary. fine. Yes. Okay, good. Please. Yeah, because that's um, yeah, that's simpler. It'll it'll lighten the lighten the packet every significantly. Um, We're executive briefing kind of people. Yes, that's what go. I figured. USA Today, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. The that's, that's what I. That's what I. That's why I tell Madden with their graphs. The you tell us what you want us to hear. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just show, yeah. I, think, I think it's important that you see where you know what funds are going which direction. But uh, yeah, I don't know that the individual try. It's a lot. I mean, I, I was looking for something a minute ago. Yeah, yeah it's a lot. I couldn't yeah. find it. So I think things are built into. Yeah. I think we're all fine with it. Okay, great. I think so. that, yeah, that'll shorten the packet. That'll make it easier for people that read them on their phone and everything yeah. too. Okay. So money, actual monies. Uh, another you know, bounce back again. So <laughs> keep being wrong. It's uh, it's working out for me so far. But uh, <laughs> at some point, I will be right, unfortunately, and uh, about things slowing down. But um, as you see, we're 288 so far, which is that much better than last year already. Um, so it's, um, yeah, I think, I think there's, I think we're going to, you know, good chance to, to like Terry's goal of topping 3 million for a collection year. I think that's, I think that's likely to happen. That's doable. Um, totally. So, um, so the the capital revenue number there reflects the that change that I mentioned where we we uh, had the Riverwalk money all come out of the capital account because previously that was over a million dollars so that three fifty adjusted that um, so that's why that number is down um, social channels do you want me to talk about the star oh I. So, all right, we'll do that. That's a good point. So the star report, we have a bit of a glitch. It's, it's, it's a contract thing. When um, they sent the new one, they'd been sending the contract renewals to Marty. And so, oh, wow. yes. So I hadn't seen one in a couple of years. And, <laughs> and we just were paying them and they were happy to send us the information. Oh. So when, so now that we need a new contract, when talking with legal date, Whatever entity was in the terms and conditions doesn't show up in SunBiz, and so, and then also there's some change with the overall Smith Travel. I think they're they belong to a different network now. Somebody purchased them, or so we're sorting it out. So what we'll get is just our numbers until we get that glitch sorted out. So we won't have that that overall comparison. Yeah, we won't have the comparison until I can get that sorted out. She. She agreed to send us our numbers until until we get all the paper done. But I'm waiting on them to send me something. Now they're it's not on it's not in my court at the moment, which okay. thankfully, um, so I can blame them. <laughs> all right. Do you so want me to give them? Yeah, go ahead. Just as we okay. Talk about. Just, I have them, but we didn't have time to put it in. So um, in um, August versus August, year over year, uh, ADR is up 3.2 at 119.38. Occupancy is at 57.8, up t um, 10 and a half points. Rev par is at 69.03, uh, up 13.9 points. Say the last one again, please. Sorry, uh, rev par, 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 69.03. 
Yeah, I'm a carry it now. No. Um, an up rev car up 13.9 versus August last year. Year to date through August, occupancy is at 70.1. That is awesome. Bigly. It's a it's a bigly number for us, so I'm excited to see that. Up 9.5 points. ADR is at 129.72, up 15.2 points. Biglier. That is even biglier. That's huge also. And you ready for the rev bar? 90.98, up 26.2 points wow. versus 21. Why are you going to put all them big ads? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wanted to read them. Can we pause and have some coal on that? I mean, uh, is that going to keep going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One can dream. I mean, that was year over year? Yes, ma'am. Fiscal year? Fiscal like John, I, I constantly Boy, good looks. I mean, what is this? <laughs> I constantly get surprised at the um, resilience of the growth. Um, I started to see some downturn for this fourth quarter, even six weeks ago, and that has evaporated. Um, we've actually, but it's funny the shift for us. I don't know if I should even say this, but I will. Is our group contribution has grown significantly over, and I'm seeing our leisure demand fall off. So the leisure demand is more important to the destination than the group component because nobody else here has 12,000 square feet of meeting space. Um, and also some of it's with the efforts that Lori's done with um, our we, uh, some work, outage work with Duke mm -hmm. has helped quite a bit. Right. Um, and I think everybody's benefiting from that across the board because it acts more like a leisure client than a group client, even though we label it a group because there's 20 of them at a time. But, they don't have the same, they don't need the meeting space so they can go anywhere they want housing. And I'm sure the short term real estate market re rentals have done well with them as well with that group. So, yeah, and I was uh, for 2023, I'm already looking for that. Um, I'm forecasting about a 3% growth, and um, which I, I, six weeks ago, I would have forecasted a 5% reduction. Over a phenomenal year. Over a phenomenal year, right. which is over right. a phenomenal year. Right, which, right, right. You know, so we've, Kind of reminds me, I used to say this, I don't know if this relates to anybody else, but when tennis was in its prime, everybody was playing tennis and buying print tennis, and then tennis fell off the face of the earth, but the leftovers of tennis is still higher participation than it was before it started to climb. Gotcha. So we're kind of like doing that now and where we were here before, now we're going to drop, but it'll come back into this zone. I don't know. We'll wait to see. Um, I still don't think all the markets are open yet that people are comfortable traveling into that could do the, the, the draw away from our destination i think having we finally have money we put into marketing and we're doing things regionally nationally we still offer the most unique florida experience in the state of florida um, and now you can get here the roadways are better and people are sort of more and more aware of us in the niches that we've been playing in so great job for the staff getting I'm us in that too. And, i mean i hate to say this but with the hurricanes um, we've lost a large chunk of our destinations in the state. Yes. Um, and so the numbers going into the 23 fiscal are probably going to be better than we even anticipated. Somebody mentioned we should be recruiting employees <laughs> from Southwest Florida. Yeah. I, seriously, I, I read that there were these two brothers that are completely out of the job. They were like, we're leaving. We have nothing. Right. They're going to just drive away. They were both in the hospitality industry on, on um, Fort Myers Beach. Which no so, yeah. exists. Exactly, because there's nothing for them there. And again, to put it into context, Gene, 3% growth is what we hope for. And we're doing 26. So it's huge. Good stuff. I'd love to see the Florida numbers and the other counties, because yeah. yeah. I saw them start to diminish mm -hmm. in the last few star mm -hmm. reports we've looked at. Hopefully so we'll get that comp by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. counties. from a neighboring county. They'd yeah. probably share it with you. Mm -hmm. So... There is something that I want to um, bring up. I was going to bring it up in other business by members, but this while we're talking finances and unbelievable growth, good job. Um, I think we need to have a real conversation whether, and I do love to play devil's advocate, so I have I have With played I've, a, I've a played a few things <laughs> in both directions. Um, Bad, bad timing on a bathroom break for what I'm about to say. Um, 
I really think that we need to ask Madden Media to look at an examination of uh, brand extension, meaning creating a brand for Inverness. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> and I knew I was going to disappoint you with that based on things you've said before, but here's, here's where I'm going with this. I'm not saying that I'm for it. I'm saying that we need to examine it. And that is because when you have, and I give this advice over and over again, if you only have one product and one smaller pot of money, then by God, you market the heck out of that one product. At some point in a corporation's fortunes, shall we say, you look at creating additional brands to market. And Inverness <coughs> has not had the hotel rooms Please get that thing launched. Please. <laughs> He's trying. Um, but Inverness is growing and they're doing a lot of things right. And I think, because I used to, I mean, Inverness was nothing last time. When I, when I moved, when I lived here as a kid, and then I watched its rebirth when I was here um, in the aughts. And the, to see it now with the depot district is absolutely stunning. And that is another property that we might want to look at. The thing that I've rejected over and over again is discovercrystalriverfl.com. The fairness perspective is not there, but I have rejected wholeheartedly discovercitruscountyflorida.com. Because, I mean, Citrus County versus Crystal River. Crystal River has this amazing brand name built into the name of the city and the river. Who doesn't want to visit a crystal river, right? So I've always rejected that wholeheartedly. But then I started thinking about, you know, essentially the Coke and Sprite and everything else. It's like we ought to start thinking about, at least examine it, whether we need a Discover Inverness FL or so on and so forth. Um you have to play devil's advocate. You have to do a pro and con list. You have to figure out the finances of it. We don't want to dilute the brand because what we have done so far is clearly working. Bad time for a bathroom break because this is a big thing I just launched into. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My bladder is competing for space these days. I know, I know, I know. I know. Zadi, I feel you because I go all the time. The... Um, so, for example, Devil's Advocate, sitting through our first presentation, they talked about, you, you mentioned the hunt and fish thing. So they're going to do hunt on the east side and fish on the west side. What brand is on that, right? So there has to be a very strategic and logical examination of pros and cons and whether it is time to do this, if it is ever time to do this. <clears throat> if nothing else... I feel like the east side of the county needs to see us go through that process and see the pros and cons because you may end up being against it yourself Correct. at the end of that because you're a reasonable human being and you want what's best for the county as a whole. That's my point. But let's do the examination. That's what I would like us to do or have staff and Madden do it. I think that's a great idea. No problem getting information, right? Mm -hmm. What the city doing? Too much stuff. You know, <laughs> this is Pardon. Citrus County, Manatee capital of the world. You're still that. It's still yeah. Citrus County. Uh -huh. Well, it, it's, it's just not a, this one town. We we spent no. a lot of years getting off I know, Citrus I, I County and getting to Crystal six River. Years ago. And the, what I always say is, it's like I represented Anheuser Busch for a long time. Nobody really cared about Anheuser Busch. It was Budweiser or it was you know Ultra or whatever. And they're a house of brands. And and then what you're suggesting is that maybe we have come close to maximizing Discover Crystal River and we need another brand, and so now we're going to become a house of brands. We're yes. still Citrus County, we become a house of brands. And, and the only question, and I can't answer it, Madden may be able to suggest it, but are we maximizing what we're doing with Discover Crystal River? And if so, then then another brand is a, is a good way to go. What we've always done here, though, is to say, how do we spend more money and do a better job? And that's what we've done. We spend mm -hmm. more money, more people come, we get more money, we spend more money. And it seems like we're still growing the Discover Crystal River brand. So is it the right time or do we need to? Or do we wait till we plateau and then we create another brand? I don't know. But I don't I, think you I want have... to wait to plateau. I think you assume at some point you're going to plateau. And I would say that the residents of Crystal River would say that we've been successful enough. 
<laughs> at, okay. some, at some point, it is going to break the back of residents, and we don't want our residents being ugly to our visitors, ever. So, so I'm they, not arguing against what you're suggesting, because yeah. it's just give us information that we can make a decision? Yeah, because like I said, I played my own devil's advocate, and so they're going, oh, there's one, there's one thing right there, like, what the heck do you do with, you know? So it's, this is why marketing is a much harder job than a lot of people <laughs> give it credit for it because there's a lot of these moving parts that you have to figure out. Well, I'll, so. I'll just be very, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll use a physician. I, I want to do no harm, right? <laughs> We've got a good thing. Exactly. Going to it's, you're forever. absolutely. So I don't want to, I want to do any harm, but I'm happy to consider other alternatives. You're absolutely. That's the right. same thing that's going through my head. It's like, yeah. all right, Davis, you sure you want to open your mouth on this? But right. it's, I, I, I think that we ought to look hear from a variety of experts on our team, staff and madam, and um, see if it's time. Well, we spent a lot of time and money from yeah. Citrus to Crystal River because it was known all over the world. Mm -hmm. So that is why we changed. And I think we should follow Marriott. Marriott had a Marriott markets in the hospitality, and they found out there is a need for resident things for the, uh, uh, for, other care and courtyard and all that. So we should co-brand and continue to promote Crystal River because it's already there and it mm -hmm. has not reached the plateau. So just follow the Marriott thing, co-brand is more important rather than eliminating discover Crystal River and oh, doing yeah. something else. Because going back to Citrus, nobody knows Citrus. We don't even have Citrus brands here. Right. Right. So You're right. Were mine. We don't have Citrus. <coughs> yeah. So citrus, nobody knows, but everybody knows Crystal River. So I think Crystal River should still be like a Marriott or Hilton. You can have sub bra according to the strength of their product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I do have. think that if you, just based on what I see consistently from like the social media channels and the interaction that Inverness gets versus the interaction we get in other areas, if you take the Inverness content out of Crystal River and make it a co-brand, where you're advertising Inverness separately than what you're advertising Crystal River, it would be a detriment to Inverness because they're not going to get that amount of coverage, like the, the rising tides float all ships kind of situation. Mm -hmm. They are seeing so much more engagement. They're seeing so much more exposure because mm -hmm. they are attached to Crystal River than if they were their own separate entity. So mm -hmm. I think that is something to keep on the forefront of your minds there is. Well, the mothership can still, <coughs> you know, that's, right. there's so many different ways you can yeah. do that matrix. And so absolutely there's what, but there are ways to do possibly, possibly ways to do that, that do not cause a detrimental effect. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, I'm only one brain on marketing here. We've got a board, we've got staff, we've got an agency. You pay an so, agency to do this. Yeah. yeah. May I have two things, and I, I have to. <laughs> I live in Inverness, by the way. I love Inverness, Jackie. You know I do. So I know, honey. Um, so I got nothing against it. I spend all my free time on the lakes over there. So um, two things to consider. We give Discover Inverness a label. We're going to have to do Discover Homosassa, Discover Ozello, Discover Lacanto, Discover, oh, Discover, gee. Discover, 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 because no. it's going to open up a can of worms. Other thing I'd like to consider, and again, love me my Inverness. There are currently 54 hotel rooms within the city of Inverness. Until Dr. Desai opens up his place, there will then be over 126. Just, I think, 124. And 900 in Crystal River. Right. Correct. There are 1,206 available bed uh, rooms. Countywide. In the county. Hotel-wise. Hotel, hotel, hotel sure rooms. Right. Excuse me, just hotel rooms. Right. Correct. That's all I'm talking right now. So if you take... The 74 that we're going to have, or the 124 that we're going to have uh, when when all is said and done in the city of Inverness. So our, the only, mm -hmm. our job is to get heads in beds. Mm -hmm. Get tax revenues. And anybody that comes, like say they're going to the country jam this next, you know, at the end of the month, they can't stay in Inverness. There's nowhere for them to stay. Central Motel is <laughs> full every weekend without an event because it's the only place to stay. I, I would make the argument that it's not to put heads in beds. That is a, a hugely important metric that we always need to keep an eye on. Okay. But statutorily, I believe it is that we're supposed to benefit tourism as a whole. However, we know where 
we know the goose that's laying the egg and the goose is hotel nights. Right. So we absolutely have to pay attention to that. And our right. B-sites. Pardon? Yeah. And our B-sites, right. <laughs> right. And short-term real estate. Collect tourism tax. My and short-term real estate. Uh -huh. yeah. My apologies, Mike. Um, and there's a thousands of those. And there's, yeah. you know, we collect a lot of money with TDC. Yep. How many in Inverness area? Uh, RV RVs. sites. I don't have the numbers on that exactly. And our short-term home, how our VRBOs, Airbnbs. We're, we're still waiting on that data from Voyage. It's just got um, pulled up. We'll get it at the end of the month, so I'll have it for the December TDC meeting for you. But, uh, you know, ultimately, you know me well enough to know my heart's in the right place. Yes, I just want what is best for our I county understand. as a whole. Absolutely. And, I think we all do. And I massively... You know, I, I understand that things change, and unless you have conversations about these things and put aside, you know, what I'm, I'm fond of saying is that a good debater can debate both sides. Mm -hmm. Your minds are made up. I challenge you both to debate the other side. Okay. Come up with a winning argument for the other side. Because mm -hmm. you Fair already enough. have an argument for that side, right? Yes. And make sure you really check those preconceived notions at the door and really say, how am I, how would I solve this problem? And because you know what? You might so come up with something now. bloody brilliant. Or it may be, you know, at least you can hold your head high and say, I did my due yeah. diligence and I showed respect for our east side neighbors who, you know, from a fairness perspective, just flat out, it ought to be discover Citrus County. But Citrus County falls like... <laughs> Right. Compared to Crystal River, it just does. So, from a fairness change. standpoint, it ought to be discovered Crystal River because that's what's best for the whole county. Correct. Right. right? I mean, so I mean, there I you think, are playing that side. I again. don't think anybody's arguing that we need to do anything with Discover Crystal River except what we're doing with right. it. Right. All you're suggesting is the possibility that a Discover Inverness may be helpful to the whole county Might in be, some yes. way, implemented in a in the correct way. And I think that's worth investigating. I mean. It's like sitting around talking about if we're going to have another beer. And if they didn't have Ultra, and Hazard Bush would be in trouble. If they stuck just with Budweiser, they'd be in trouble. Because yep. Ultra is the one making all the money. So you don't know what will happen. I don't know. It's a good exercise. I agree with that. It's a good exercise. Take a look at it. You always have good stuff. Thank you. Yes. I just, um, I, I'm the only one here from the east side. <laughs> so uh, I, But I get the city businesses, and then I get the businesses that are Inverness address, but they're not in the city, and and they all say, well, we don't we don't get any recognition. Everything's Crystal River, and then I try to explain, you know, the, everything we talk about here, and they just look at me and go, well, would everybody be giddy if everything was Discover Inverness, and we'd say, oh, oh yeah, Crystal River too. Come on, you can go see there too, and so I understand their frustration, and that was what I'm trying to bring to the table that they're, and technically, well legally every way there's only two incorporated cities in the county and that's Inverness and Crystal River and so um, I think all they're looking for is what they feel is some fair representation and with nothing but Crystal River being talked about everything I watched today was all saltwater scallop and that's good that's always been Crystal River's thing but Inverness has always been world-class bass fishing and different things to explore around the river and the lake. We're not, to me, we're not utilizing the rest of the water we've got in Citrus County. So, um, I will say that based on what I've seen from our internet properties and social media channels and whatnot, that the staff goes over and above to make sure that they're talking about the east side of the county. So, well, I guess the, the businesses don't see that, so I don't know. I, well, I just think they're not on these meetings and they're not really looking at it. People sometimes well, they need to be force fed the information. And I have tax figured tax. that and out. And that's where the commissioner us discussion discussioning. Ooh, a new one. <laughs> us discussing <Good> this Jackie. <laughs> as a group is good because it lets the public see that we care. We do care about Citrus County, and we care about what's good and fair for all. Yes, and that's absolutely. where we're at. Yep. So thank you. And yes, sir. Some immediate things that number one does the east side of the county truly understand how much money we are spending to promote the full destination here. Chris Cringely, I can't pronounce his name. Kingridge. We're doing him for ten grand a year to get the bass fishing side out. If you don't utilize him well enough, then we haven't utilized him well enough. 
um, right away, um, I love the, we actually adopted a sort of what you're talking about with our own property. We have amplifier sites for our golf course, for our marina, for our restaurant. Nothing to say Tempest couldn't be charged with looking at amplifier sites for Inverness, Homosassa, Floral City, whatever we want to do. You know, whether, and you, we, you'll see the results of how they organically produce on top of that. Had, has anybody reviewed, do we have a significant number of uh, Google AdWords, SEM we're doing, that would incorporate the opportunity for people to search and find Homosassa, Inverness, Turtle Festival, whatever else we want to do. And if we're not, we should direct Madden, Madden to have those terms as a purchasing capability on the, and this is, wouldn't cost us a dime more. The amplifier sites might cost a bit more, which would give you a unique URL on top of that. For dollars a year, we could go ahead and try to buy Discover Home Assassins, Discover Inverness, Discover. We could, you know, and if somebody else already owns them, then we'll find another way around it. And that way they don't have to make a mint of money on our mistakes. I was um, going to bring that up, except <laughs> this is a public meeting and somebody is probably going there to register it right now. Well, I mean, that's, they're probably already there. As a matter of fact, they're already there. There's, yeah. there's already a few that own those things. Yeah. So if we haven't already bought them, we should be buying them. Like tomorrow, now, this afternoon, they're dollars. They're $35, 40 a year to get yeah. those URLs. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much, I mean, there's so many things that, A, I don't think anybody knows we're truly doing, and then bad mm -hmm. on us for maybe not so maybe making them be aware. Maybe it's a communications issue as well. as. Well, and and again, to, to the point we just made, if, you know, I have more rooms at my hotel than Inverness will have when Dr. Desai builds twice as many rooms as they already have. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> so you can't get what you don't have. Yep. Love to see airplanes flying into the lakes. Is there an infrastructure there that will take them and be able to house them and fuel them and send them back off? Is there a place to do all the boat launches that can have it done? And if there is, I lived here for 12 years and don't know it exists and I love water. So, you know, there's some point in time to go back to your point also, Commissioner Davis, I had it and I lost it that quick. Um, EDC, this is more economic development than it is tourist development. Mm -hmm. We are here to develop the tourism on what exists within our economic system. Mm -hmm. So let EDC step up for a change and Chambers step up for a change and develop the infrastructure that we as the TDC promote. All righty. <laughs> He just dropped that <laughs> <off> right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I will say I'll that. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're working on infrastructure, and you should have called out BOCC for that, not the other two entities. Wow. Um, and EDC really, true, EDC really needs to um, get reformulated. We, we are all aware I'm all for it. Yeah. Matter of fact, if I still am amazed that when we went through the name change scenario from Visit Citrus to that nobody would stay in a meeting long enough from any of the other destinations to voice their opinion to add my name to the list. It's a new day in a month. New every day. Did I really? Was that much of a? That was that much of a? Was it that much of a mic drop? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and a hush comes over the crowd. I forgot where we were in the movie. <laughs> we started with money. <laughs> Right, she left the room. We don't need to know about the and money. Then, she and comes then back we, and... Uh, I guess the word is digressed. <laughs> I thought it elevated. I, I thought it or, elevated, or, frankly, or, or John, instead of digressed. I think there was discussioning going on. Discussioning. As, as, as a coin, a new TDC word. We as were discussioning the items. And Madam Chairman, I 100% agree with needing to continue the, the constant branding and refresh mm -hmm. and get it yeah. going. And I, I'm 100% behind that. Another one. Is this a political discussion or... Is it a financial decision or a business decision? It looks like a political to balance because politician all this thing, nothing against you to balance the thing, but this is not balancing the thing. This is the tourism. It's, it is, I, I lead with respect and this is a matter of respect to look at, look at things from the east side. Absolutely. And it may simply be a communication issue. It may be that we need a sheet or one sheet that says this is, this is everything that we've done for the east side. Okay. We do provide that. I provided it for John and Jackie because uh, I keep a list of every uh, fam tour that comes through, mm -hmm. who I request for them, who says yes, who says no, mm -hmm. and we get a lot more no's on the east side. Um, we, I keep a list of all of the different social media posts that I do, 
Inverness and the East Side gets 25 to 30% of our social media coverage, which is a lot more than the rooms that they provide for sure. And then um, I also uh, go to the Inverness Area Council meetings every month, and then they're starting the downtown Inverness business leaders meetings in December. I'm slated to attend those Good. as well. That Good. way I can continue that conversation. That of, I'm here for you. I want to be a part of that. And that is something that I've said to Eric in the past too, is um, I think that the communication side could be very helpful from the city of Inverness of them letting the businesses know, look, this is what they want to do for you. Um, even Sam and TJ down at Sidebar said, Oh, you did this post about Sidebar, and we got, uh, I think it, it was a crazy number. It was a really good post, and they got 200 new followers in the week following that That's awesome. post. That's and so, awesome. you know, the ones that I'm friends with and want to play play ball in that regard definitely do see, a, um, see the benefit of it. And so I will continue, because I, I live in Inverness, too. It's something, I love that city. I live right downtown and w- can walk the cattle dog in the morning. It, oh, I'm something, jealous. That's awesome. I love it, right? And so I see all the good parts of it, too, and I want to promote it as best I can in the way that is going to benefit it the best. And so I'll continue to be reaching out to those businesses and telling them in every way that I can. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate and we that. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Anything and, for you, Jackie. You know that. Thank you, baby. And to girl. Mr. Mankey's um, <laughs> point, my first thought was this could be done with basically URL pointings, and that's like a really minor way to to look at it. And um, but again, this is. I just wanted to bring. And my apologies for derailing the discussion, but um, it was a good derailment. No, it's good. And um, yeah, as I'm fond of saying, <laughs> on. The, day is when I'm talking to a particular colleague, well, I'm going to go where angels fear to tread, <laughs> and then yeah. just let let it explode. So, anyway. The road less traveled. So, uh, Carry on. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm looking at the clock and things, we have all the other reports are in your packet. You can go through them if you like, but we're generally... Done by 11? Closing shop by now. Um, yeah, that's right. Last month we closed early. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a. Well, uh, but before you go, great job. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, the numbers you. are no doubt unbelievable. Yep. I mean, they're really unbelievable. You guys are doing great work. You really yeah. are. Mm-hmm. Madden will make a, their next presentation in December, uh, a kind of a update of where we are, as well as the um, part about the um, the, zoo, the the zoo RFPs. That they were collecting for oh, when, yeah. when the um, when the augmented reality thing is completed, uh, they they they've got a, they'll have options for us to to look at and uh, as to where we want to move forward. But that's for December. Uh, we'll try to keep next month fairly uh, calm, <laughs> since less less sticky widgets oh, next week. Yeah. No, you and I are in, out of town, um, so Jody will be driving the ship. Everybody yeah. buckle up. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so I just wanted so, to, real quick, I highlighted yes. those. So we're not going into the details. Um, and just to explain the reason why they were highlighted, and I wasn't sure if printed out in black and white you could even see that it was. Um, one thing to note for social media is that saves and shares are your golden nugget when it comes to social media interactions. Likes and comments are nowhere near as heavily uh, valued by the algorithm. Mm-hmm. So the saves and shares have been increasing steadily um, on average. And so that's something that I did want to just bring to your guys' attention that yeah. the algorithm is continuing to favor us. And so, mm-hmm. yay. Awesome. Thank you. So, Anything um, else? Nope. That's it. All right. Um, F, other business by council members? Anything? I'm good. Um, you know, we had a great first Friday, biggest turnout ever, I think. <clears throat> Scarecrow Festival was a big, great hit. And then next Friday, we had the Taste of Crystal River downtown. You can buy tickets, I think, on Eventbrite or mm-hmm. whatever. What day is that? Next Friday. Friday. This coming Not two this days? Friday, the following Friday. Okay. That'll be the 21st. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and our, our theoretical new county administrator, um, visited with his four-year-old daughter, went to Scarecrow's Fest. Oh. So, 
I haven't got an interaction with a man. Help, help so the bit. mic right. He agreed, and we're done. Well, we still have to have a <laughs> oh, vote. We Mike still have to vote. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Well, Were you giving that? me a sign or shaking your pen? I was cleaning my finger, but I still want to say something. If it's <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> I just like to introduce Clive Walcott. He's joined the plantation team as our director of, of rooms division. Um, he's going to be a new resident to the area with his wife and his two young, three young children. Welcome. So Welcome. Clive will be an instrumental part along. Again, you all know Lori is the director of sales and marketing. Mm-hmm. Clive will be there to keep us running tip top and better than ever. Thank you. Welcome. Awesome. All right. Uh, open to the public. Anybody? No? Yes? Hey, Holly. Yes, Mike? Hang on just one second. Mike is... Yes, Mike? A few years ago, the TDC discussed having an off-site or an, uh, a separate meeting for a long-term strategy. Given the can of worms slash discussion you open. Should we consider that for something next year to uh, have a, a longer uh, strategy type meeting uh, amongst us? I know it's got to be publicly announced, but that way it's not part of the regular agenda. Just uh, spitballing that. Uh, other than that, uh, all I can say is um, rooting for Tennessee this weekend. Yay, go Bulls. <laughs> well, Mike, that's a great suggestion. You know how much I love long-range planning, so <laughs> sounds like a plan. Uh, Clive, yes. Hi. Okay, so thank you, Michael. And as, as Michael can uh, can assess and Lori can assess, uh, I'm, I'm not shy about speaking my opinion on, on stuff. And uh, just a little bit about, about my background. Uh, moved from Philadelphia to um, Fort Lauderdale in 1992 with the intent of staying here only two years, and I'm still in Florida. Um, it grows was, on uh, you. was a part of the uh, the uh, uh, TDC and Convention and Visitors Bureau over in Fort Lauderdale. Also was the president for the Hotel Association of Collier County in, in Naples for, uh, for a number of years and sat on the board for the Choice Owners Council. Um, which uh, represented all the choice hotels in the state of Florida, which at that time was about 180 hotels. So as Michael uh, said, I'm moving my family here from West Palm Beach right now over over to here and um, welcome the opportunity to hear what, what's going on in the county. So uh, two, two points I'd, I'd like to make, and one of them I'm going to open up the Pandora's box that you guys just talked about. But <laughs> seeing the, uh, number, uh, the, uh, the numbers that you have revenue-wise, have there ever been any consideration from the TDC or the Convention and Visitors Bureau to offer a scholarship in the hospitality industry uh, to generate more interest from students um, in the, the, you know, to get involved in the hospitality industry <laughs> in the county? Um, the the uh, University of Florida has an excellent hospitality program, and since you have so much money floating around, my, you know, my suggestion would be look into offering a scholarship to a high, to a, a high school student, uh, you know, to, uh, to get interest at, and, and maybe in the, in the long term it will pay off for the county. We have a hard time right now, wherever you are in the state of Florida, recruiting people for the hospitality industry. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we have a problem right now at the, at the plantation trying to get staff. There's positions that's open for two years that we, we can't find anyone for. So offering scholarships, getting going into the schools that, you know, getting those students interested in the hospitality industry. You know, uh, we, uh, the, the hospitality industry is, is one of the few places that you can do pretty much everything. We have we have sales and marketing. We have food and beverage. We have engineering. We have all these different departments that, you know, if we get these <coughs> students uh, interested, we might in the long term have a pool of people that we can uh, that we can, uh, you know, call upon. And if, if we have the money available, why not offer a scholarship? It, it, it would uh, be uh, a... a you know, very uh, it, important thing from, from my perspective to, to, to do. Uh, the other thing is, uh, as I was saying, open and back the Pandora's box, we, uh, you were talking about uh, Discover, uh, Discover Inverness, Discover um, you know, uh, Crystal River. What we did over in Fort Lauderdale, we had the same, uh, the same problem with, uh, with people saying, well, you know, we, we, uh, 
yes, there, there's downtown Fort Lauderdale, but we have, you know, we have Pembroke Pines, we have all these other places that bring tourists to the area. Um, so we ended up several years ago just making a decision and calling the uh, you know, Discover Greater Fort Lauderdale. Um, it encompasses all of those things. We made made sure we buy, uh, you know, we paid for keywords so that if someone put in Discover Great, Greater Fort Lauderdale, Inverness would pop up or Pember, uh, whatever little, little cities are incorporated into all of those. And the same thing we did over in Naples when I was the president for the Hotel Association <coughs> and, the, and the TDC was a very <coughs> integral part of that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Michael knows because he, he was over in, uh, in, uh, in Collier County also, uh, it, it was Discover, uh, Naples, Marco Islands, the Everglades. So it, it covers some of those areas that, that, you know, people were saying, well, we feel like, uh, and I know Lori doesn't like me using the expression, but we feel like the ugly red hair stepchild because, you know, we're out in Inverness and we're not getting any, any uh, you know, uh, respect, but Discover, Greater Marco Island, uh, for, uh, Marco, Naples, Naples Marco Island, Island the, Everglades. the Everglades. Um, so that might be something you might want to consider um, to kind of make her feel a lot better. Thanks. So that's my take. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. Welcome to the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them I can't forget. You know, I had a, just like you, I had a thought and it ran away. So I guess we're running away now. Yeah. All right. I'm getting older. Anything further? All right, we are adjourned.